This is Tolany TV, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening, and welcome in to yet another World Juniors live stream here on the channel. Well, it's about 6:43. We're just firing up here. We are well in advance. And where the heck did I set my water? Oh my goodness! I had my water here a moment ago, and I think I lost it. Well, is what it is. Ladies and gentlemen, if that doesn't just tell you welcome to Dell Any TV, I don't know what does, but uh, we are well in advance of the Sweden Russia game. I want to get this going. I want to get this fired up simply because, simply because it is absolutely imperative to me that we get going early, we get going often, and we get going big for Philip Broberg this evening. Ray Bro, absolutely. Sam, welcome in. Of course, like you're taking home the record this tournament for first comment on the live stream every time. Anyway, Sweden. Russia, 7.30, about ah, just under 45 minutes from now, I guess you could say. Germany just booked third spot in the division against uh, Canada and Finland. So S Germany is off to the quarterfinals. They end up with one win, one overtime win, and two losses on the tournament for five points. Finland, Canada, that is our big, 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 big time kind of match up tomorrow. That's what we're really waiting for tomorrow at 4 o'clock. We'll be live. Oh yeah, Tyson only has to work a half day tomorrow, so we'll get live for that. But the big thing that we got to get running with is the fact that tomorrow's a big day even without the Canada game because it's Sweden versus the U.S. And for us Oilers fans, honestly, you know what? Dylan Holloway's been exactly as advertised in the tournament so far. Problem is, Dylan Holloway is nowhere near as flashy of a hockey player as our good man, Philip Broberg, is. Obviously, a couple of years advanced and stuff like that. Sure, sure, whatever. Uh, whatever. But end of the day, for us as Oilers fans, right now the focus has got to be primarily Philip Broberg, secondarily Dylan Holloway. But tomorrow we'll kind of get into covering both again. It'll be nice. The doubleheader is a killer. Absolute mad respect to everybody else that has pulled off some double headers so far this uh, this tournament. I mean, I did it on Boxing Day and dang near almost died. So we'll uh, we'll manage to get into something uh, reminiscing a double header tomorrow. And uh, well, like I said, I only have to work till noon tomorrow, so we'll have plenty of time to rest and recoup on New Year's Eve as well. Germany, they are in behind, of course. Canada and Finland in Group A, Canada, Finland, 4 p.m. on New Year's Eve. And then, yes, you've got Sweden versus USA. But tonight, first off, Sweden versus Russia, a very pivotal game this evening for us as uh, Philip Broberg does return to the lineup. I guess that's what I should start with in case you're tuning in. Probably want to tune to about the 45-minute mark of this live stream before the hockey game gets going here on the channel. So, Sweden, lineup news. Philip Broberg is in. Lucas Raymond is in. Oscar Olsson is out. And Jesper Wallstedt, everybody's been asking, he starts this pivotal game against Yaroslav Askarov of Team Russia. So it's going to be interesting to see how that all plays out. All right, Brad, welcome to the live stream. And Ray, bro, my day has been going good. It's been a long grinding day. I got some really... Bad news today, but you know what? End of the day, we'll battle through and we'll uh, figure out that situation in the new year. I think that's kind of the pivotal thing here to do. So, my friends, right now it's an interesting time as we get set. Waiting a few minutes here for this game to get underway. We've got a total of about 45 minutes to go before game time. So, with that, I'm going to take a few seconds to go find where I set down my water. I'll get back to it. I'll let everybody crowd in here. As you join up the live stream right now, don't forget to hit that like button. Let's get as many people in here. I'm not saying hundreds of thousands. I'm saying let's get everybody that's normally in a live stream in here. And the way to do that, make it interactive. Make it get going. Like button is the easiest thing you can do. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get her fired up. Here we go.
Got it. Figured it out. Be right back. Gotta get iced tea. All right, good to go, ladies and gentlemen. You already rip? I think we're all ready to rip. It's going to be a good hockey game. I've got my iced tea, so what I need to tell you right now is if you're uh, just tuning in, you get the early preview here. Of course, you see on your screen what's up with Team Sweden and whatnot. Water, iced tea, mixer all together here, and call her a good go for sure. So here we go. You see straight up, this is this is the recipe of what's in the jar. No questions asked. If you want to know what's in the jar, go to the start of the live stream. All right, Lane, did Broberg miss last game? Yes, Lane Broberg was out of the lineup last game. Not fully 100% ready to go. But now tonight he is against Team Russia, and it'll be a joy to watch him once again as watching highlights of Finland versus Slovakia. And again, that Slovak goaltender just beat on a seeing eye shot from the point. You hate to see it. Anyway, bang. Finland, chance out. Oh, man, what a brutal play. And look at this hop. Look at this hop. Bang, poke checks it. And the defender actually pokes it into the net off his own stick. So that's pretty rough. Anyway, Ray Bro, getting to Oilers talk. Ladies and gentlemen, anything you want to talk about Oilers right now, the floor is open. Anyway, consider Bouchard elite while... Well, Here's the thing, Bouchard's played a total of nine games at the NHL level and had one assist, so right now to uh, consider him elite, just in that phrasing, no. To consider him an elite prospect for the Edmonton Oilers, absolutely. And I guess that's how you phrase it, and what you mean by elite is where I draw what I say. So Dan, welcome in. We're just sitting here watching some highlights between Canada, or sorry, Germany, Germany, and... Uh, Switzerland, Peter, welcome in. Glad to have you along. Taken after the legendary Peter Budai, who was training with Connor McDavid and, of course, you know, uh, that guy, Austin Matthews of the Leafs, that us Oilers fans don't really like because he's really not that good. He's worse than Leon Dreisettle, and Toronto pretends like he's the best hockey player on the planet, so that whole thing. Yeah, that whole thing. Anyway. Uh, Broberg is back and ready to go. Yes, Broberg is back in action, and we are looking forward to seeing Broberg out there for Team Sweden this evening. It'll be a blast to see him in the lineup, of course, against great competition, right? He's going to have to play some defense tonight against Russia, and that's where we really get to see, after a three-point night to open up the tournament, we get to see what he can do against Team Russia and then, uh, Lane, do I think Broberg will be, on, or Bouchard will be in the lineup full-time this season? Well, be on the team and be in the lineup, I guess, are two different questions. Be on the team, yeah, absolutely. He's the uh, fourth right-hand shot D-man we have. However, in the lineup every night, doubtful. But, right, Adam Larson, key injury early last season, key injury last season, and that meant the evolution of Ethan Bear rather rapidly. So keep an eye on how that all plays out. Ristomaki, welcome back. Hey, glad to have you along again. You just watched the Switzerland versus Germany game. It was a great game. And Carter Savoy's performance Ray Bro has been amazing in the NCAA. Is he getting noticed as one of the better Oilers forward prospects? I think he's just getting noticed before because he's scoring goals. Trust me, if he was putting up only assists, 99% of the hype would not be there my honest opinion. So the fact that he's putting up goals is great, but the fact is he's still got a long way to go and we do not want to see him leave college in the next two years. I'm going to tell you that. And thoughts on Holloway? Guys, unfortunately, I was unable to watch the Team Canada game. Of course, yes, I saw the highlight of Holloway blowing the guy out of the water with the big hit, but that's about all I saw of Dylan Holloway yesterday due to the fact that I was working until 4 o'clock. I uh, had some vehicle troubles getting out of work last night. And, of course, then that meant I got home late. And there was about 4 minutes and 20 seconds left in the third period when I got home. And at that point, it was 10 nothing. Not really worth tuning in, unfortunately. And that sucks because I would have liked to uh, tuned in for a lot more of the game. That's for sure. And you're going to come back when the game starts down. All good. And yes, some NHL news today. Old man Zdeno Chara has headed over 
to the Washington Capitals. You imagine the Washington Capitals could have had Henrik Lundqvist and Zdeno Chara on the same team. <sighs> Say it ain't so. That's some kind of nightmare scenario back in 2010. <laughs> Right? That's uh, that's the funny part about that. So we can enjoy and laugh about that all we want. But it was quite interesting to see what could have been had Hank not had the heart issues and need to have open heart surgery. But that all said, wishing him the best in a speedy recovery and getting back to action as soon as possible. So ladies and gentlemen, if you're just tuning in this evening for the first time and you're sitting here, what the heck is going on? Well, game time's not till 7.30, all right? I, I got a little anxious. I got a little bored, maybe is the word. And I said, you know what, 7.30, I just got to get going. It's been a long enough day. Let's get this live stream started, gone through, and done with. And then let's go to bed and enjoy what is going to be a crazy, absolute insane day tomorrow with the doubleheader Canada versus Finland, Sweden versus the USA. You want to talk about prime time matchups. Those are it in this tournament, New Year's Eve. It's going to be a special one, so we'll be along for that ride here on Dolany TV tomorrow. So that means tonight we just warm up, we get the vocal cords a little stressed, and then we get going for what's going to be a very fantastic day tomorrow. I look forward to it. Hopefully we get things going. But with that said, ladies and gentlemen, if you're looking, um, looking for anything to kind of watch, I guess would be what I say. If you'd, you're looking for anything to watch, something to fill your time as we get ready for this uh, hockey game tonight, may I suggest some other Dolany TV content? What a lot of you in the comments may or may not know is in a prior life, I was actually a broadcaster for a local media outlet in northeastern Alberta. In Bonneville, they were located, and I covered a lot of Junior B and Junior A hockey. So in the chat right now, you can go and take a look through a playlist of all the live hockey videos I have captured over the course of my career as a broadcaster, now semi-retired if you count YouTube as keeping me active. And essentially, you can go check that out. I've collected hockey fights, highlights of the Oil Kings. I've collected Junior B highlights. Anything and everything is right there in that playlist featuring the best of the best on Dolan TV. So make sure to do that for yourself this evening. I would very much so appreciate that if you could. Definitely helps to see everybody checking out the older stuff because the older stuff, believe it or not, is the backbone of Dolany TV, that is for sure. All right, Magnus saying Sweden wins. Nicholas, you're going saying that uh, Sweden also wins. I think Sweden is an easy bet to win this game based on how they've looked in the first two games. That said, Russia's not looked so solid and potentially tonight a rebound game for them. I'm not counting the Russians out. They have a very good squad. They have a very good goaltender who has been subpar based on what I've seen. Again, I can't comment and sit here and crap all over the Russian squad because I have not watched a single minute of Team Russia playing this World Juniors yet. So I'm excited to kind of sit here and watch Vashili Pod. Paul Colson, who uh, will have a chance to impress me tonight as a Canucks prospect. There's going to be a lot of fun to enjoy what happens here for Team Russia and Team Sweden. Jimmy and Sean, welcome into the live stream. Glad to have you guys along tonight. Jimmy, this is the first one you've been joining into so far this World Junior, so cheers to you on that. And Kay, did I uh, call Pontiac's games as well? No, back in my day, that honor belonged to Rob Hunter. And then it, uh, just as I left in 2018, it transitioned over to Michael Menzies up there in northeastern Alberta. I don't know if Menzies still has the play-by-play uh, -play role, but I know it went from Rob Hunter to Michael Menzies. And Rob Hunter, who had been the longtime play-by-play -play voice, I very much so respected what Rob did and uh, very much so enjoyed working alongside Rob on several fronts over the course of two years. Rob is... a uh, Grade A professional in the broadcasting industry, and I'd say an even better human being, 100%. So there you go. That's glowing review. I mean, it's been a long time since I spoke to Rob Hunter. That's why I maybe say it a little awkwardly, is it's a ghost from the past, essentially, at this point. But Rob, if, you, if this finds you, hey, thinking well and hoping well for you. Go Yaks. Um, so... Here's the thing. Yes, Askarov could be lights out this game. It could be interesting for sure. Mr. Farrakhan, everyone in the room, let's go Sweden. Hey, you know what? I think we could go with Sweden tonight. 
And Broberg needs to have a good night. I, I don't think it's he will. He he needs to. That is the question. He needs to have a good uh, good night tonight. And Broberg scoring a goal again. I'm not sitting here hammering home that he needs to score a goal. I just hope that we can clutch up, have a good game out of Sweden. Watch Philip Broberg look really good, right? And obviously, if Sweden wins, that really helps Philip Broberg look good. And then uh, hopefully see Philip Broberg come out and come alive in tonight's game a little bit as well. And what do we got? Is that your jar on ST? Yes, absolutely. So I went from the uh, handled mug to the just straight up good old mason jar. The other one's in the dishwasher, so pardon me if I'm drinking out of just a mason jar tonight, but got to make something happen for sure. And Coyotes fans thinking about uh, Soderstrom over Broberg. Again, end of day, all remains to be seen. Anything is possible at this point when it comes to the NHL prospects. Right now, I just want to see Mr. Philip Broberg go out there and do as best he can. That is for sure. So we are we are sitting here waiting. 7.30 p.m. start for Sweden and Russia. And... Uh, yeah, so you guys commenting about the moonshine and the mason jars, I'll tell you, my uh, the shine I have seen in my family actually comes in the vinegar bar bottles. You know those pop-top uh, white-plugged vinegar bottles? That's how uh, the moonshine in my family has always been done. So uh, keep that in mind, if you would. Not sitting here advertising moonshine, but if some somebody somewhere gives us a bottle, that's... Uh, that's how it comes. So, uh, that's not an iced tea, that's straight. No, yeah, no. It's uh Canon STs right here, ladies and gentlemen. Keep that in mind. But, I mean, if I start losing my mind a little bit, I may have some questions asked about what's in the jar, and that could be a lot of fun later on, especially once I start tuckering out probably in the third period. Hopefully it's going pretty well. Bernard, Tim Stutzel is awesome. Stutzla, 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 not Stutzel, Stutzla is awesome. Yes, he's uh he's been dynamite this tournament and it looks like he had another dynamite game against the uh who do you call them? Um those guys. Those guys that uh did that game against them, Switzerland, those guys. Yeah, those guys. That's right. Um All right. Anyway, Orange Cat's there looking at me. He's trying to scrounge up how he gets over here and takes a look into my mason jar, that's for sure. And look at that. Uh, game starts in half an hour, man. Come on, X. Sorry, guys. I just got a couple texts coming in here. That's always the fun part. Everybody fires me texts right before things get going, but instead they're getting it going right now. Uh, yeah, and my friends with Lego Rocks, him and I, we often chat. We we try to stay in contact. Him and I have similar paths to how we've come around in the uh, hockey world, right? And if you know anything about Geo, he's covered a lot of Junior B in his lifetime. I've spent a lot of time covering Junior B in my lifetime. So, you know, might be a little bit different uh, situation, but we both come from a similar background, broadcasting guys, so... Why not? Keep in contact. Keep those contacts up. Maybe not my uh, college classmate by any means, but still a guy I'd like to keep in contact for sure. And Vang, Happy New Year from Lloyd Minster. Happy New Year from Southern Alberta this evening. Happy New Year from Southern Alberta. Enemy territory. Glad to bring you this one to go. Um, well, no. Uh, All right, all right, there we go. Answer that question, good to go. Um, yeah, so we're asking, conversation's kind of shifted here to Stutzl, Stutzla for a second here. As uh, you wonder if Stutzla will be better than Dry Settle, it all remains to be seen what uh, Ottawa has for talent with him, right? Is Brady Kachuk exactly what Tim Stutzla needs on a top line? Could be, possibly, but are you going to give Tim Stutzla top line time? Could be interesting. Right, that's a tough question to ask yourself, and it is uh, it is going to be a tough question for I think the Ottawa Senators 
to answer for themselves. If I'm to put it lightly, for the Ottawa Senators to answer that question, I guess that would really give us an indication as to how things pan out for them moving in the future. There is X snipes Edmonton Oilers. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you have not been in the streams so far this World Juniors, you do not know why X snipes Edmonton Oilers is important to this whole process, but without him... I would not have access to TSN for these two weeks of the World Juniors. So that said, X, thank you for joining along the stream, supporting things, and of course supporting me as we get another World Juniors stream going. X is another Edmonton Oilers YouTuber, me, an Oilers YouTuber, as you very well know if you're in here already. That said, he covers the Oilers, same as I do, but he is sitting there down at about 220 subscribers. And if I can do a little bit of a favor, here is somebody that's got 8,300 subscribers now. It's pass a couple of you guys along to maybe get a second opinion on some of those crazy things I say, right? Is I mean, X and I, we are long, long time friends going back to our very early broadcasting days together. That, well, actually, that's a ridiculous stat. I've, I've never actually said that before, but me and X, yeah, we have spent some time broadcasting together way back in high school. And, uh, may or may not uh, have gone a couple of totally different directions and met in the middle back over NHL 17 a little while after. But, you know, it was great to catch up. And, well, you know what? Now like a brother in arms to me on the Oilers YouTube channel stuff. Absolutely. And everything else. Guy go to war with any night on NHL 21, even though the game sucks. So that said, here we go. What I got to say is... Simply put, Chara is with the Caps now. Yeah, we have covered that already once, but I'm sure we'll cover that two or three more times in the live stream. That is pretty big breaking news here on uh, YouTube today. I think uh, John with Hot Take Hockey absolutely saw his video rocket today, and that was nice to see. I mean, you always want to see your fellow guys go out there and uh, get the job done, that's for sure. So... What I'm looking forward to is just getting this game underway, getting this game going, and seeing what this... Uh, Swedish team brings against potentially tougher competition than they've faced so far in, of course, Team Russia. I mean, it'll be really interesting just to see them face very good competition for the first time, no matter who it is, whether it be Russia or USA. And I guess you get one half of the doubleheader tonight and then the other half tomorrow, right? Obviously, doubleheader for Sweden, doubleheader for us tomorrow in the live stream. Doubleheaders abound as we head to the last day of 2020, if you can believe it. A year that never felt like would end by March 28th, but here we are, December 30th, it's 7.05 p.m. We've got a total of less than 30 hours, less than 30 hours left in the year, and that is absolutely insane to me at this point. That is craziness to me, but I guess we'll uh, we'll battle through, and we'll finish up these 30 hours like the troopers we are, my friends, like the troopers we are. So, currently sitting top of the clock, 7.06 this evening as Russia, 2.00 and 1. Six points in the top group. And, of course, Sweden, 2.00 and 0. Six points in the top group. And do I think Canada is ready for Finland? I have no clue what Canada is. Last night I didn't watch, so the progress of Canada, I can't tell you if they've made it or not to where they need to be when things get going here in the biggest game of the tournament so far for them against Finland. So right now I'm a little bit more informed on Team Sweden, I do believe. I've live streamed all three of Sweden's games so far as of this one, and then we'll live stream the one tomorrow, and we'll have done all of Sweden and only uh, three out of four of Canada. So... Keep that in mind. I'm a little bit more informed on Team Sweden, and what I know of Team Sweden is we're going into Game Two, into the, or Game Three, into the toughest competition. I've said that a million times already, but what I'm uh, what I'm saying is, you know what? Now is the real test. We're talking about Canada facing the real test tomorrow, but uh, that's why I'm a little bit more of a homer on Team Sweden. It feels like at this point is they've got the two toughest games of the tournament coming up in terms of competition. And it's going to be interesting to see how it all pans out tomorrow night against Team USA and, of course, tonight against Team Russia. And you had a live stream. You actually watched Canada beat up the Swiss. There you go, Sean. That's solid. And that's one thing I've noticed, actually. I, I wondered kind of what's, what's going on with the numbers for a lot of folks live streaming 
games like I am, like this traditional format that I've been doing for several years now, but I couldn't uh I couldn't figure out how like why the numbers seem to be low, right? I mean, I'm not saying you see a live stream for John and on Hot Take Hockey and you see him over, almost at 300 viewers in the second game of the preliminary round and he's sitting there doing that. He's crushing it, absolutely. But to me, nobody's in the stands. You've got a whole different set of circumstances in the world than any other year. And you only got 300. I mean, I'd expect that in a regular year. But then you've also seen kind of the situation, what's going on on YouTube is there's actually been quite a few real actual live game streams available here on YouTube without copyrights taking them down. That's interesting to me. Am I going to chance it? No, because the guy that has never made a penny off of YouTube has never made views off of YouTube before. He's like, you know what? Tonight I'm going to live stream it on YouTube just because screw TSN. Well, guess what? Exactly as Sean says, there's where 4,500 people were tuning in last night. That's uh, that's why I'm talking. The numbers seem low because the numbers are relatively low. What'll be interesting as we get into these two nights and of course the medal rounds starting on January 2nd is to watch kind of if that gets cracked down on and if that gets cracked down on ladies and gentlemen we are in store for absolute insanity in these live streams in early January. I cannot wait and I hope to have you along for the ride. So with that said for the first time in this live stream, I'm going to ask you if you could uh, potentially hit that subscribe button for me if you're just joining because that would be greatly appreciated. The sale on that is I am an Edmonton Oilers fan. I am all Oilers all the time here on Dolany TV. And let me tell you, I hope to teach you a little bit of the passion I have, A for hockey and B for the Edmonton Oilers, as, uh, as I very well think I display and of course have it a little rub off on you there if you hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for the whole NHL season upcoming. I am home tomorrow. I am home tomorrow for the Canada game. I get off work at noon, so I get off work at noon. I'll be home by 1 and we'll be just dandy for the hockey game tomorrow. So don't you worry, double header coming up again tomorrow just as it was on Boxing Day. So don't you worry about that. Stay tuned. We're going to have a lot of fun. It's 7.10 p.m. right now. If you're currently joining into the stream, come back in 20 minutes and I'll have your live play-by-play -play of tonight's hockey game. What you need to know about tonight's hockey game for Team Sweden. I'm Again, I'm sorry. Philip Broberg is about all I care about Team Sweden realistically, but you have to cheer for winners, right? Sweden, lineup news. Philip Broberg is in. Lucas Raymond is in. Oscar Olsson is out, and of course, Jacob Wallstedt, or Jesper Wallstedt. I don't know why I expected that to be Jacob. What am I doing? Starts versus Yaroslav Oskarov. All right, that's what you need to know. That was terrible. I mean, I couldn't imagine if I was doing the play-by-play, -play and that's how I delivered it to you. Oof, brutal. Anyway, uh, Oilers, Oilers trivia right now. I'm just enjoying the slow pace of the chats, and I don't think I need to complicate it. I think we just need to keep her going the way she's been going. I don't want to get too amped up yet. And, uh, yeah, right now, just everybody chillax. Relax a bit, and we'll have some fun. All right, anyway. Roslovic, do you think it's a go move for the Oilers to make? I think we should get, uh, have kept Sheehan. Uh, no, Sheehan, we should have definitely not kept Sheehan. You look at the numbers, 5-on-5. Five five. We are talking about improving 5-on-5. Five five. You don't keep Riley Sheehan. We tried it, and... Uh, that's all we can say. I mean, penalty kill, he was fantastic. But other than that, unfortunately, the move really did not. It, it more or less backfired for us for a guy that just straight at times was snake bitten, yes. But at the other point was just absolutely brutal for us. And uh, yeah, the Sens, you guys want to talk a little bit about the Sens here for a second. The Sens are going to be a very interesting team to watch this year. You want to talk about a team that could very much so screw up the North Division, that's the team that'll do it, not the Montreal Canadiens. Everybody's, all oh, the Canadians are going to be so good. No, it don't matter how good the Canadians are. If Ottawa starts making noise, it's game over for a lot of teams, whether that be the Canucks, Oilers, Flames, Habs, Jets. <laughs> you name Ottawa, if they finish in the top five, there's two teams below them, and that's going to be a big, big mess 
for us, that is for sure. So, MK, yes. Turris is a huge upgrade on the third line. And why he's a huge upgrade? Right hand shot. He has the ability to kill penalties as well. And then you have that ability to go out there and, of course, score a couple five on five goals and maybe actually take the stress off of Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisettle, and that will probably allow them to perform even better than they already were last year. And that's the thing. Connor McDavid is the Edmonton Oilers' biggest problem. I made a video covering that way back in 2018, and I think from what I maintain of that video in my head is simply this, is Connor McDavid can do it all. And every other Edmonton Oiler relies on Connor McDavid to do it all instead of carrying their own weight. Therefore, Connor McDavid being able to do it all is a big problem, right? He's too talented almost is the issue. Therefore, right, you add more depth around him, you add more talent that wants, maybe not is the fact that they're talented, it's the fact that they want to carry their own weight under him and go out there and try to show him up by making noise for themselves. It almost seems as if too many Oilers are scared to be an offensive leader on this team because you have to have Connor McDavid as your offensive leader. Well, you know what? That's a big problem. If you think Connor McDavid has to always be your offensive leader, that's a major issue. Now you add a guy like Kyle Turris who has been an offensive leader at times in his career. That's a huge get. Riley Shan, not exactly that guy. And Death of Dingers, yeah, it's uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens with the Canadian division. I'm just looking forward to hockey dropping on January 13th. You know what? I, I want to make my big get loud speeches uh, before the season starts, but at the end of the day, I just want to watch it. I just want to watch it happen, see it unfold. I don't care where we're rated, where we're not rated. Let's just get back to hockey. That's all I care. January 13th, we get to do that and that's very exciting as we're sitting here now 7 15 p.m ladies and gentlemen a little bit of Edmonton Oilers talk starting to dominate this live stream and that's exactly what should happen but it'll be interesting to see what we can get going here in terms of a big live stream a big game and a what's hopefully going to be a big game out of uh out of that uh guy named Philip Roberg. And Trent, welcome in. Glad to have you along this evening. Hope I can provide you just as good a coverage as I did the other evening. And guys, yeah, that's the thing. Turris has the experience for the Oilers. Shan had some, but not enough. And when it comes to the Sens, they're going to improve hopefully a lot this year, but hopefully not enough that it affects the Oilers and their performance within the Canadian division. So ladies and gentlemen, in case you're just joining into the stream this evening, up here on my screen, you've got it right there. Sweden lineup news, Philip Broberg is in, Lucas Raymond is in, Oscar Olsson is out, Jesper Wallstadt starts versus Yaroslav Askarov. Yaroslav, Yaroslav, I'm not 100% sure. I've heard it pronounced both ways. If I have a clue, we'll be having a good evening. Yaroslav Askarov, the starter for Russia. So, we find ourselves already 33 Minutes into this live stream, yeah, man, goodness sakes, that's crazy. And already on the live stream, 85 people in and out of Dolany TV in the past 16 minutes. That is, uh, that is always some good production right there. And here we go. Let's see what we can, uh, see what we can do here for the Oilers and Sweden as we get set to watch our good man, Philip Broberg, hopefully go to work and dominate a little bit as the 2015 World Juniors roster. Oh my goodness, that's actually a pretty solid little NHL lineup nowadays. And uh, Trent, you're hoping the Swedes whip uh, the Russians tonight? Well, I'd like to just watch the Swedes put up, uh, put up a good fight, put up a good effort, and watch Philip Broberg kick as much butt as humanly possible. And yeah, that's that's all I'm all I'm hoping for here. Austin, one of my thoughts on Chara heading to heading to the Washington Capitals. They could have had a dream team in 2010. 
That's the best chirp all day I've seen of that, and that is fantastic. Azeo, what's up? Oh, you know, just getting ready for what's going to be a good little live stream here this evening. It's going to be fun to uh, see what Philip Broberg does, and hopefully Team Sweden as well. And everyone's favorite aspect of Broberg, and what do we think he needs to work on? Philip Broberg, his balance, his skating ability, and more so his strength. His strength is an asset for the Oilers' back end. If he gets physical, look out. The man is big. Philip Broberg is a huge guy, and especially if he brings that to the Oilers' blue line, it's going to be very interesting to see what he does in the future as a big Swede with the ability to play tough, with the ability to, of course, score plenty of goals, play special, special hockey on the attack, and just do a lot of fantastic things that we haven't had Oilers defensemen do in a long, long while. And when it comes to uh, when it comes to the Seattle Kraken, realistically, that's that's a Chris Russell question, or a James Neal question, or a Kyle Torres question, and it's as simple as that. Three options: good night, good night, and have fun. Um, what do I think about the Blackhawks? I think you're in trouble. <laughs> I think that's what you're in trouble. The Blackhawks are looking bad. Kirby Dock out. Devin Ta- or Jonathan Taves out. And of course, yeah, that guy, uh, Dylan Strom, still unsigned. So there's a lot of questions in that Chicago Blackhawk lineup, that's for sure. And uh, yeah, so it's uh, it's not so much, I think, Boston's changing direction. They just don't have a spot in the lineup for a guy like that anymore. They just do not have a spot for a guy of that age, a guy of that stature. That's the bigger thing. He's a guy with a big stature in Boston, a big stature in the NHL, and really a big stature that requires a lineup spot. And Boston simply does not have that in them to give to Zidane Chara at his age and where they're going. So it's not so much moving on. It's just there's no longer a fit. Even if they weren't moving on, I don't think there'd be a fit there. And um, yeah, you know, absolutely. Sorry, guys. Just reading the comment here. Yes, yes, Puliarvi is a huge kid as well. All right. Anyway, I've seen the uh, viewers peak here. All of a sudden, we're up to 37 folks in the live stream tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome in. I'm Tyson. This stall any TV. We are roughly 10 minutes outside from the broadcast going live to Edmonton in Alberta, the capital, the provincial capital of Alberta, Edmonton, and uh, Rogers Place, where tonight we will watch Sweden versus Russia in the uh, penultimate day of 2020, the second to last day of 2020, and of course the second to last preliminary round game for Sweden this evening against Russia, and then they tomorrow will play. They will play against Team USA. So a big couple of nights here for Sweden. A big couple of nights on Dolany TV. And that's where I pass it over to you. Take this live stream. Take the next couple of minutes here to think about potentially hitting that subscribe button and joining along for what's going to be one heck of a hockey season here with us crazy Oilers fans. Let me tell you, I'm looking forward to having a lot of fun with all of you. And of course, potentially having a lot of fun with... uh, what could be a very good season for the Edmonton Oilers coming up. As, yeah, Henrik Lundqvist and Zidane Ochara on the same team within uh, within the same year, that could have been very fun to watch. But unfortunately, Henrik Lundqvist out. I don't think you're going to see Zidane Ochara as much as you might want to in Washington. He may be a feature seven, and it could be interesting, I guess, to see how they use him. And Marion, you're just listening to me while well, we are... Not watching anything yet. We're just kind of watching Sportsnet right now. Waiting for us to get through the top 10. And then obviously the last couple of headlines. And then bang, we are into the Sweden-Russia game. Which is going to be a huge, huge game for us for sure. Bloopers of the year coming on up. So there you go. That's going to be fun if you're watching that. What you need to know is Vasily Podkolzin for the uh, Russian squad. He has a chance to impress me tonight. I'm looking forward to watching him. He has three points in three games so far. And then you've got Noel Gundler, who has three goals in two games so far. Simon Holstrom leads the Swedish side in points. I believe Philip Roberg will hold that honor at the end of tonight. But Colson has 17 minutes and 27 seconds average time on ice. Apparently something's messed up here. I think 
they've got something messed up. And of course, Hugo Olmfeld, who has Olmfeld, I guess that's how it's said, has been fantastic for them. But it'll be interesting to watch as tonight is Jesper Wallstedt who gets the start for Team Sweden. You look at that. We've got ourselves quite a night shaping up, whether you want a good goaltending duo, whether you want a great game out of Philip Broberg, a great game just straight up speaking between Sweden and Russia. No matter what you want, it's going to be a fun, entertaining hockey game this evening for both sides and for us as Oilers fans, kind of outside observers, knowing that we're not really a fan of either squad, but knowing that we've got a vested interest in Philip Broberg doing his best tonight for us. So, that said, let's get to Twitter here quickly. Do the old quick check. As we got to go to the NHL and Oilers Insiders list, the exclusive Dolany TV list. And let's see what we got going here. As a, Let's see. Um, what do we got? Germany lost players before training camp, had eight tests positive when they arrived at the World Juniors, got beaten badly by Canada with only 14 skaters, and had naysayers complaining they didn't belong here. They just qualified for the quarterfinals for the first time. That's a thing. That's a thing they just did. Don't forget. And then uh, let's see what else we got going here. After brilliant rookie season, how high is Ethan Bear's ceiling? Jonathan Willis is back with the... Athletic, that is a treat. And of course, Trey Corona bringing in the lineup tonight. It's Holtz, Sundvik, Sundsvik, Sundsvik, and Raymond on the top line. Gundler, Kostmer, and Holmstrom. Heinemann, Niederbach, Soderblom. Soderblom, who's six foot something stupid like eight, and he's crazy. Bierselius, Wickstrom, and Nybeck with Vist. Vist. As the 13th forward, Broberg returns on top of the pair with Bjornfoot. And then you've got Johansson, Soderstrom, Branstam, and Andre with Hedstrom being the 7th defenseman. Wallstedt gets the start for Team Sweden this evening. And we've got a whole bunch of reaction to that Germany win. This coming from Kurt Levins. That historic German victory is precisely why I think those complaining about there being too many teams at the World Juniors are just out of touch. Do you want to grow the game or not? It's a good question. Straight up, I'm all for growing the game. Do whatever you can, ladies and gentlemen. We need more hockey fans. Can never have too many hockey fans. If you're just joining the live stream, we are about five minutes away from... TSN going live to Edmonton for World Juniors coverage. And that said, i got to tell you, we're going to have a fun stream tonight. We're going to enjoy this evening. And, well, at the same rate, we got to have a little bit of fun with the fact that Sweden's going to have a good game. And secondarily to that, if you're going to have some fun with us tonight, hit that like button. Let's get some other folks in here and have ourselves a great evening of hockey all together on the second to last day of what's been a horrific year in any sense. It doesn't matter if you're talking the big sense or the small sense for most of us. All right, Sam, you're ready to go. One quick last Oilers question. Are the Oilers over the cap after signing Ethan Bear? The Oilers were over this cap before signing Slater Cuckoo. They were over the cap after they signed Dominic Cahoon. We've been over the cap for about two months now. Just saying. So here we go. Dan, you're back. We're getting ready to go, and we are going to have a ton of fun here in about four minutes' time when we go live to Edmonton for Sweden versus Russia. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, a big shout-out to my man, X snipes Edmonton Oilers, who's done a fantastic job of being a host for me this uh, this live, live streaming event, I guess, that you could call the World Juniors. He has allowed me access to his TSN Direct account for me to watch TSN so as I can feed the feed to you and I gotta tell you it's uh it's been a pleasure to bring it alongside to you. That said, we got ourselves a game that you're probably wondering, how do I watch? Well let me tell you a little secret here if you're in Canada. Alright, if you're in Canada and you have a Bell Mobile cell phone, okay? Do you have a Bell Mobile cell phone? Or do you have uh, like a shell cable package and you're away but you have your tablet like do you, do you have some kind of situation where you might already have access to the TSN in some sense you probably do if you have a Bell Mobility cell phone and you're paying more than $75 a month 
you more than likely have access, free access I should say, to Bell 5 TV. And if you have Bell 5 TV on your phone, jump out of my live stream, go watch the hockey game, all right? You can watch TSN on that app for free if you're a Bell Mobility customer. Get it done, get going, get over there, and enjoy your hockey game this evening. That's all I'm going to say, Adam. I mean, straight up, yes, I'll miss you in the live stream, but secondarily to that, I want you to watch the hockey game. And I don't want you to have to sit here and wonder how you can do it when you could be doing it, okay? There you go. Hot tip from somebody that knows. Take it from somebody that knows. I had Bell at one point, and I can tell you, yeah, guess what? Straight up, you can do that. I used to do that when I'd be in the hospital for blood work. Anyway, MW. Hello from Saskatchewan. Hello from Southern Alberta. Enemy territory bringing you live tonight. World Juniors coverage. Sweden versus Russia. As we're two minutes now. Two minutes within two minutes of the TSN feed. Flipping to World Juniors coverage in Edmonton. And what other roster moves do I think the Oilers should do this year? Play hockey. Is that a roster move? Name a lineman up and play hockey. Let's go. I'm ready. I've, I'm comfortable with what we've got. Let's go do it. That's all I got to say. We just got to get back to playing some hockey here and go have some fun. So, I see the streams hit 62 viewers. I should say right now, in case anyone's tuning in for the first time, I'm Tyson, the Stolony TV. Welcome in. This is live coverage of the Sweden vs. Russia World Juniors game here on the channel this evening. I am an Edmonton Oilers YouTuber. I cover all things Edmonton Oilers every day. That's my bread and butter. And very rarely do I stray away from doing anything non-Edmonton Oilers. So if you're an Edmonton Oilers fan, I hope you consider sitting here and watching Philip Roberg alongside the other 60 of us and have yourself a great evening. It's the second last day of 2020. If that ain't something to celebrate, I don't know what is. But to top it all off, we get ourselves a heck of a hockey game tonight and then two very good hockey games tomorrow evening for New Year's Eve. I'll be bringing you those same in this format as tonight, tomorrow. So enjoy tonight and let's meet back here tomorrow for what's going to be a fun double header starting at 4 p.m. and going all the way to 11 o'clock on New Year's Eve. Now that means I just got to stay up one more hour and I can welcome in 2021, even though time, depending on how you look at it, is a flawed concept. All right. Austin, what do I think of Holloway so far, and how far do you think Sweden can go in the tournament? I've watched one game of Holloway. It was the Germany game. I have no clue what to make of him, other than he really knows how to get grindy with that big hit against Switzerland. Okay, fair, good. That's about all I got to say. As a boiler, I am an Alberta born and raised guy. Absolutely, always lived in Alberta. That's not even a question. As SE, cheers, checking in from Sweden. Hey, appreciate it. Hope you stay along for the ride this evening. Would literally like to have you along. Get the Swedish perspective on Philip Rover. And Nicholas, you're predicting here a Swedish-Canadian final in the World Juniors. Finland might have some say to that, but I'm uh, not sure. I think Canada's definitely got the ability to make the noise in the final, and of course so does Sweden. So it'll be interesting to see how it all pans out. But tonight, Sweden needs a big matchup against, of course, the Russians to get going anywhere. So, just give me a second here. What's hurting my head here is this toque. It's a little too compressing on my ears. So, we'll adjust that right there and look at that. You get a look at the uh, old toque here. It's, a, it's special, but hey, if I don't look like a... Don't look like the Southern Alberta special bringing you the game that I am. I don't know what I look like. As Bernard, the USA team looks good. Well, let me tell you, I have no clue. I haven't watched maybe five seconds of the USA. And yes, Sam Broberg is still playing with Bjornfoot. And I will be very interested to see how Bjornfoot and Philip Broberg combine for things this evening. It'll be fun to get going. And Dylan, channels to watch it, ask yourself this. Do you have a Bell mobile cell phone? If you do, Bell 5 TV app on your phone is where you want to uh, you want to uh, get going with that. All right, Bell 5 TV on your Bell mobile phone. That's where you can watch TSN this evening. Anyway, uh, Euler, you was watching some of my older videos, and I will tell you, um, I will I will explain that all 
well uh, well into January. That's not something I would exactly want to sit here and bring down the stream with that heavy topic this evening. And NHL Network in the United States, yes. Dylan, you can watch it on the NHL Network in the United States. Dylan, Sam has got you taken care of. And did anything happen today in the NHL? Yes, of course, we saw Zidane Chara head over to the Washington Capitals. James Duffy now on my TV screen. He's ready to bring us home for tonight's excellent matchup between Russia and Team Sweden. So... What's uh what's James Duffy got to say? He's gonna hand it over to Gord Miller and Ray Ferraro and my goodness, look at that. We're already at six thirty Pacific time, seven thirty mountain. We're getting ready for a hockey game. Ladies and gentlemen, that snuck up quick. That was a quick forty five minutes. Twenty twenty one draft eligible with Lulea H F Jesper Wallstadt is gonna get things going. All right, can't wait to see this. It's going to be a heck of a hockey game. Again, off-colored Swedish pads. I don't get that. Their jerseys are perfect yellow. And then they've got off-colored weird pads, colors. The other goalie has it too, Olenfeldt. So I'm going to be interested to see kind of what happens here with Team Sweden and their off-colored goalie pads. Looks like the Nets and the Atlanta Hawks are in quite a basketball game. 125-124. I don't think they know what defense is late in the fourth quarter. Um, so... List of victims, Switzerland's fallen to Sweden eight times, Czech Republic eight times, Russia seven, Finland seven, Slovakia five, and Denmark four times. Man, Denmark's been in the tournament that many times since 2008 to be beaten by Sweden that many times, four times. That's crazy. That's a good time. I guess that would be four, five, six, or seven times for Denmark, but it's great to see them for sure. And Sam, you're getting excited to see those AHL updates. Well, today they announced from what I saw of that post you sent me, the fact that, well, we will be seeing, we will be seeing the AHL start up February 5th. They're looking to run a 44-game schedule. That's exciting because at the end of the day, that's 44 games for a lot of Oilers prospects to get in the lineup and get some action at a good level. All right, so Bob McKenzie giving us that veteran experience, man. Bob McKenzie, semi-retired. Bob McKenzie, looking as sharp as ever on that desk for us here on TSN. And you love to see that, ladies and gentlemen, this evening as we kick off what's going to be a heck of a hockey game. That's all I can say. Until it gets going, that's all I can tee it up as, as Yaroslav Askarov versus Jesper Wallstedt in net for Team Sweden. And it's going to be fun to go. And that streak is pretty incredible, hopefully. And Nicholas, does that mean Broberg stays? No, no. Broberg is, as far as I still understand, fully on loan with Sheleftia for the whole season. Until his season in Europe is over, he does not come to North America, whether it be in the AHL or NHL or in between. He does not come to North America. That might remain to be seen. I don't know. He might get called up to training camp here. At, again, color me shocked if it happens, but it might very well happen. Anything is a possibility at this point. And Marion, it is a foregone conclusion at this point that Mary or Mike Hoffman will sign his contract with the St. Louis Blues. They just have some LTIR niceties to take care of before they get going. And let's see. One thousand. Wow. LeBron James is the only player in NBA history to score 10 plus points in a thousand straight regular season games. Wow. That is stupid nuts. And if I've got anything else to say about the World Juniors, I guess I'd be going. But unfortunately, there is not much happening in terms of news on Twitter tonight. We're trying to get uh, ready for what's going to be a crazy game. But we can't seem to find anything worth talking about. As, um, yeah. It is what it is. Interesting. Okay. All right. World Juniors live stream. Where are we sitting? We're sitting on commercial break right now. That's about it. And your upper deck, uh, Philip Broberg, Young Cards card came in the mail. $15. That's a, I think that could be a steal of a deal in the future. Caden, what am I? What was I talking about? I was talking about a whole bunch of stuff. Beyond me, what I was talking about. I, I pretty much forget what I was talking about halfway through uh, talking about it. That's the problem. And hopefully Oilers draft Florian Elias. He's got eight points in four games and is a real fighter for the puck and great on the PK. Well, it depends if he's available where the Oilers are. I guess right now you want to see the Oilers drafting 31st this year. 
If you want to know where I hope the Oilers draft in the 2021 NHL Enter Draft, it is 31st overall. Why? Because that means we won the Stanley Cup. My friends, boom. Let's get to it. Let's get to it as Troy Corona faces off against Team Russia in the World Juniors. We've got the guys circling the ice. Yaroslav Oskarov in net there for Russia. The referees and linesmen this evening, my favorite thing. Brett Rowland, Carter Sandlick, are your referees. Adam Harris and Tarrington Wyonzek are your linesmen this evening. 32nd with Kraken. Well, we don't... Uh, I, I actually, yeah, I guess that applies in that draft, doesn't it? It applies in the upcoming draft. 32nd, I stand corrected, Sam. And a hockey card, card collector, I'd pay $15. Hey, you know what? I don't even know the last time I paid $15 for a set of hockey cards. It's been a while. And, all right. Let's get to it. Joel Ronmark, the head coach of Team Sweden, and head coach of Russia... You've got Igor Larionov doing a fantastic job by all accounts. Igor Larionov looking rather sharp in that suit tonight. Face-off time, ladies and gentlemen. The puck, ooh, there it is. Center ice, let's get to it. Round, what is this, round six or seven it feels like. Sweden, Russia, puck drop. Now, all right, let's go. Sweden, ooh, actually they didn't drop the puck. Look at that. They did not drop the puck. Let's get to it. Sweden, Russia, the puck's dropped, and Nybeck wins it back. Broberg, the first touch, and the puck fired into the Russian zone on Askarov. He swallows it up, and that will be it. That will be all. Either an icing there, or um, I'm not 100% sure, but he gets it going for Team Sweden, who appears to have a whole bunch more fans getting ready for tonight's game. Respect to the man with the headphones similar to mine. It's going to be fun to see. And Broberg is wearing number five for Team Sweden. He's battling in front of the net right now by the looks of it, going into the corner, chasing his man down, going back to the front of the net, and getting things going and underway here as this will be turned around. Hit there. Broberg staying front of the net. Love to see an Oilers defenseman stay front of the net instead of chasing into... The corner, that is lovely to see, that is for sure. Russia, though, buzzing in the offensive zone. First shot coming up here in a second. They're going to sneak it in. Rebound, and that's back of the net. Wallstedt, a little bit upset. Ah, yeah, he's a little bit upset with that one. I don't uh, I don't blame him. A little bit of interference there. And, yeah, the Swede's a little bit upset as well. But Russia appears to have struck first in this one. They've got everybody in live from Russia tonight. They look like they're having a fun live stream. And look at this one right off the hop. Yeah, it looks to be goalie interference. Just take a second here as this one drives to the net. you got to believe that's goalie interference. And Amirov's the one that scored that. Is that Rodian Amirov? Is that the Maple Leafs prospect? I believe it is. Off the glove. But that is a goal called on the ice. But bang, back of the net. Yeah, look at that. That, that looks like me crashing the net for NHL uh, 21 grinder, 6 foot five. Konstantly Zhurkinov up there for the Detroit Red Wings in the uh, whatever league those Detroit Red Wings play in. But um, anyway, that is no goal. 19.23 to go. They reviewed it. They called it no goal. That's pretty obvious, I'd say. So Jesper Wallstadt, upset for a reason, gets it called back. And away we go for what's going to be a now very fun hockey game between Russia and Sweden. You want to start with a statement? How about that? As now they're, I don't know if they called it, uh, yeah, no scoreboard. Ah, yes, there we go, because we've got the Sweden lineup notes. Let's go, bing, bang. Let's go there right now as it currently stands. Russia's got a goal. And Caddy, welcome in. As that, oof, look at that. That is a heck of a drive by Pod Colson, though. That is a heck of a drive by Pod Colson. What a drive to the net, and Jesper Wallstadt. Guy crashing through the crease like that. You aren't going to be able to stop him, that's for sure. And Caden, make mock trades for JJ? Well, uh, I'll tell you, Jujar Kara, mock trade, seventh round pick. I've talked about that enough times. There's no mock trades where you're trading them for another player. I just don't see it. As that's saved there by Wallstamp more than likely as Sweden's taking its time. Actually, we're taking our time going here so we'd like to see what happens here for team sweden hopefully no goal <coughs> oh 
Oh my goodness. <coughs> oh, that's better. All right. Up well, for any Oilers? Well, I mean, is what it is. No goal fish of efficiently. Officially. Come on, Tyson. Words. English. Use it. 19.23 to go. Referees step out of the penalty box. And they're going to wave this one off. No shock here. As it's going to be a big old... None of that. That one don't count. Igor Larionov, your squad loses a goal. And away we go with a 0-0 hockey game. 19.23 to go. The face-off outside to the left of Jesper Wellstat in... The neutral zone, I believe, is where it should take place. I'm no hockey referee, but that's a little bit of hockey knowledge that I have. Is Bud Coles, and yeah, he drives that all. I mean, Broberg could have pushed him off the puck a bit more, but Broberg might have crashed Wellstat, and you know how uh, Oilers defensemen crashing into their good goaltenders fares out, right? We've seen that before. Anyway, 0 0, 19 23 to go in the first period. I imagine there actually might be some folks in the live stream that are too young to understand the reference I just made about Mark Bergeron. That is slightly concerning. Anyway, there's honestly, if you're 13 or younger, you may not understand that, and that is absolute insanity to me. Sweden finds themselves tied 0 0, 19 16 to go in this first period. Yes, Philip Broberg now on the bench after that first shift. Solidly a good first shift, but tough to watch uh, that goal go in. And now, let's find out what we can get going here. Is this one's going to be flipped? Nope, turned over by Sweden. Now, Russia attacking at the Swede zone. They get it back. They're looking for it. It's going to go past everybody. Wellstedt, out to play it. He's going to go back to defenseman Soderstrom, who headmans it ahead. Tipped there by the Russians, back into the neutral zone possession for them. Tipped out of the zone by Sweden, and now all of a sudden you got a little tic tac, tap, 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 tap happening in the neutral zone. Russia regroups in their own zone, starts the headman breakout ahead, tipped into the zone there by Russia, gathered there by Sweden, and I believe that is going to be an icing call. Longest winning streak, preliminary round, World Junior Championship history, 03 to 08. Canada had 22. Problem is 08. To 2021, Sweden has rattled off four straight, no, 54 straight wins. Yeah, there we go. Um, uh, yeah, <laughs> Mr. Farrakhan. Uh, I was a little young to be doing that, but I tell you. So here we go. Sweden without a shot to start this game. Russia's got three, 1833 to go. Well, Stat's going to swallow this one up and play it into the corner. Uh, let's see what we get going up the ice, back into Russian possession. They're going to have it at their own blue line. They're going to move this one ahead into the neutral zone, through the neutral zone, in on the attack, dump it forward. You like to see that. You love to see it, um, see it pushed forward. That's for sure. And now the Russians setting up the attack. They, uh, they look like a team that might be able to stick with Sweden here because they got some size and that's, uh, that's the one thing Sweden's had over Czech Republic and, of course, Austria so far is the size advantage is just um, just incredible for Sweden over those two teams. But now Russia, a team that's got some guys on there that are pretty big and they're having their way in the neutral zone so far with Team Sweden. 4 nothing. the Russian shots now, potentially 5 nothing if the... Russian defender didn't fall down to the blue line. Shot fired through traffic, possibly over a top or off the block or well stead. And now Sweden's going to get out one-on-one -on -one back the other way. Here comes the Swedish attack. Dipsy doodle backhander for shot number one of the game off of the shot of Soderblom. Of course, who else but Soderblom of Team Sweden, number 25. He's just a monster out there. Love, love that guy. He's been solid. And, of course, he's the one that scored the between-the-legs shot earlier in the tournament. 17.09 to go. In the first period, this is some wide open action here. Wallstead out to play it again. He'll play it back around behind his own net. It'll be carried up there by the Swedes who turn it over. Shot on. Wallstead goes into the corner now. Russia cycling it down low. They're going to walk out of the corner here onto the half boards. Leave it there again. And yeah, I wasn't just kidding. Russia's got the size to keep up with Sweden tonight. And it's going to be fun. Grind it out. Grit and skill. Absolutely needed in this one to win tonight's hockey game. Sweden in on the attack. Dumps it in on to Askarov. 
turned over there, maybe potentially by Russia. Nobody back at the blue line, so absolutely turned over. Fired back deep, and Sweden controls, looking to tip it into the slot. No dice there. Russia gets it behind the net, but another solid turnover there, forced by Sweden. And they're in on the attack behind the goal line of the Russians once again. They're working out half wall now. They dump it down, man. They are working down low on the boards behind the Russian net again. Still back there, just trying to get things going. Point shot from, I think that was Broberg, absolutely nailed, but a save by Askarov. Remember, this is probably the toughest goalie that they have faced in the tournament. Yeah, sure, the Austrian goalie made four goals on 65 shots and made 61 saves, but back the other way now come the Russians. They're in on the attack. Shot blocked there by the Swedish Atta uh, defender, I think that's Nybeck number 10 actually, good little solid defensive play there for him for a beat out of position Swedish defense that does include Philip Broberg this puck gets out of the zone, down the ice it goes, Russia rushing back and it is going to be an icing call that, my friends, was a thrilling four and a half opening minutes you look at how that went, here's Vashkarov in on the attack, shoots oh, what a play what a play. Oh, that's Holtz. Number 10 is Holtz. And look at that shot. Absolutely labeled by Philip Broberg. But a glove save there by Yaroslav Oskarov. And that is tough. Missed call on the Russians. Well, missed call uh, looked like a missed call against... Oops, I'm getting things confused. Shut up, Tyson. Philip Broberg still on the ice after that icing call. He's trying to work his man. He's going to play a lot of minutes tonight. And he's got to try and avoid those icing calls. Not get dog tired in the first period of play as he gets back to the front of the net like to see that he is the guy that plays right on that top blue paint and waits for the puck to come to him he doesn't go chasing it around he's got a man in the crease looking him pushing him out of there eyes up head on man in front gets there of course Broberg gets back and allows his goaltender that extra half second gets that extra half second to allow the goaltender to make the save not the prettiest play by Broberg, but just enough to get the job done, and sometimes that's all you need. Look at this. Broberg battles the man, holds him up that extra half second. And you know, Broberg, he's not banging his stick saying he was beat after that. Sure, he was beat, but he did just enough to allow Wallstedt to make the save. And as Broberg, you walk away, head held high, get off the ice, and now allow another attack to set up, hopefully, for the Swedish players. A fantasy of... The 45th overall pick by Nashville in the 2019 NHL Entry Draft. Super Mario, you're a fan of your longtime rival Winnipeg Jets. Hey, appreciate you being along. It's going to be a good time tonight, and it's going to be a good time in the North Division, Canada, and getting to see maybe Winnipeg and Edmonton renew those old nasties, right? Winnipeg and Edmonton used to go to battle, oh, what, the late 70s, early 80s? Yeah, there used to be a lot of fun between those two teams, and it'll be fun to kind of see what happens here in the next little bit for those couple of teams. So now, trying to get something going. Puck is on side for the Russians. They're into the corner. They're attacking. They get a shot there blocked off the arm of the Swedish defender in front. Nifty little play to get it to Soderstrom, the Swedes, trying to break out off the boards and cleared out of the zone right onto a Russian stick. They're back. They're back. In on the attack, they're going to fire the shot, and that's going to go over top of Wallstead. This has been the most competitive hockey we've had to see Sweden play so far. Russia working it down low. Good shot, shoveled on net. 0 0, 7 to 2, 8 to 2 the shots for the Russians. And they've been hopping. They've definitely been driving the pace of play so far this game. Sweden's had a couple good shots. Of course, you got to remember that Broberg chance, but that one through traffic. Russia just letting it rip from anywhere, and they're. Their mantra looks like shoot early and often and just don't uh, allow the Swedes to out muscle you. And that's so far been the plan and it's been effective against Team Sweden for Team Russia. 13.29 to go in this first period. Czech Republic versus Austria tomorrow at 2 p.m. Yawn. That's terrible. But uh, this one didn't go out of play. I thought it did. I was going to take a break to read the chat, but now a Swedish player trips on his stick. Absolutely blows himself apart. Russia back to the attack, but look at that. Headman support at the blue line. Sweden back the other way. They tip it in, and Askarov way out of his net to play that one. But don't worry, there's a Russian defender waiting there for it. Now a collision in neutral territory. That chopped back on to a Swedish stick. Back the other way now come the Swedes. They're going to cross the red line and get into the Russian zone. Big hit avoided there by Bjornfoot. And, well, guess what? Back into Russian possession after 
the uh, dump in, and now Sam's going to ruin the flow of it. Sam, bad news, bad news, mayors, man. Just rough. But look at this, a turnover here by the Swedes. This is going to go back behind the net. Back door, tippity tap. The Russians score, and it's a 1 0 game officially for Team Russia after that beat of a goal on shot number nine of the game. Good goal this time. They get it done. Good solid effort scoring that one for sure. And you have to like how they scored that one. Watch this. Philip Broberg, not on the ice. All right, Philip Broberg's not on the ice for this goal against. They forced the turnover on a good forecheck, beat the defender back to the far side post after circling the net. And well, now, boom, back in the net. Afenasiev scores the goal, gets it up, one nothing, and we're in for some fun. Because I believe this is only, actually this is the second time Sweden's trailed in the tournament. They did trail Czech Republic, if I remember correct, in game one. All right. Michael. He had hope in heart surgery back in 2006 when you were nine, so I became an Oilers fan. Michael, that's pretty crazy. As somebody your own age, it's pretty nuts. I, That's one thing. I'll sit here and I'm just going to take a second as we're on a little bit of a whistle break here. Is It is nuts. The uh, the real life stuff that I can't imagine going through that so many other people have had. I guess that's how I try to put it in. So here we go. Twelve twenty one to go. Igor Afenasenov, Afenasiev, however you say it, gets it going. Back the other way. Mikhail Abramov got an assist on that one. I think there's a couple of fans maybe happy about that. Sweden trying to push the forward. Push the puck forward use your words <laughs> and Michael hey that's hey I, that is mad respect right there the fact that <laughs> you can think of it that way that is mad respect to you right there on that one props to you on that that made my night <laughs> Sweden trying to set up the attack maybe for the fifth time no it's going to be an icing call don't you worry 11:46 to go in this first period we're having a little bit of fun in this live stream so far so good for the live streams this evening, I'm seeing 23 likes on the stream. Guys, thank you so much. I mean, I've asked for likes on the stream maybe twice so far. And to this point in every other live stream, we've maybe been sitting at 10. So to watch that we're sitting at 23 so far is very welcome. Thank you so much for that. Let's get back to it, shall we? Sweden in the defensive zone. They're going to win the faceoff. Broberg's out there. He's going to take control of the puck now. Head man it ahead. And icing. Nice try. Failed. Keegan, welcome into the live stream, by the way, too. And, yeah. Craziness. 11.38 to go in this first period. Like to see Sweden maybe set up an attack at some point. See Philip Broberg feature a pass or two. Maybe Sweden needs a power play and a greasy power play goal from a certain Philip Broberg who's wearing the C for Sweden. I don't know. Maybe something Sweden would be Sweden. Ah. Right? How many more times can I say Sweden? As they're battling along the far side corner. Now Russia back to the point near side. Shot misses wide. Russia and Sweden. These two uh, defenders. Okay, somebody's got to take a penalty here. That's a major slash. How there's not a penalty coming up to the Russian Vasily Podkolzin. I don't know. That's uh, brutal. He looks a little injured to boot, though. As Philip Broberg is going to battle that one out. Was he battling with Broberg? Possibly. Broberg might have been playing mean with him. 10.57 to go in this first period. Shot on, fired, saved by Askarov. 10.51 now to go. Sweden finally into the offensive zone. Soderblom gets it back to the point. Shot goes into the corner. Now three shots on the net for Sweden. Four now actually credited. Okay, that's nice and positive to see. Sweden looking, but the Russians just giving them no options in front. Now Sweden fires the shot from the slot. Nothing. Nothing happening there, but a turnover possibly by the Russians. It'll go into neutral ice and back into Russian territory where it is offside because Soderblom, the giant giraffe out there at six foot eight, just comes roaring across the line at no speed at all, maybe zero miles per hour on that one, just gliding and takes it offside. Fun, dandy, fine. We'll take a second, we'll take a break. And I'm just going to tell you right now, guys, if you've enjoyed the first half of this 
first period, definitely consider hitting that subscribe button if you're new to the channel. Would appreciate you to stay along for the ride here when what's going to be a crazy NHL season for us Oilers fans. And that's, of course, what Dolan TV is. All Oilers, all the time. So don't be shy if you're an Oilers fan to drop that subscribe button, especially. Currently one subscriber off of 8,320 subscribers. That's the kind of guy you're subscribing to. A guy that gets excited about rounding up to 20 subscribers from 19. That's the guy I've always been. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Doll Indy TV. Just wait. I have I have something very special. Some of you, most of you, have probably already seen the special intermission commercials while I go to the bathroom, but uh, just wait until you see what Doll Indy TV really is all about. I think I've got the second pack loaded up, not the first pack from the Canada game on Sunday, so stay tuned for that. It's going to be fun. And then I'm going to have to make a full mixtape of that and maybe play it for a whole intermission one time. But, uh, yeah, okay, that's Cosmer that was getting tied up with Putkolzin, who's the Russian captain, very upset, very uh, angry with the fact that he was getting interfered with by Cosmer, maybe a little hurt by it, but wonder what happens here as it go, gets going. Keegan, where's my cat? There really isn't room for the cat to be up here. If the cat's up here, we got problems normally now. It's a whole new setup. The bed's not here anymore, so just is what it is with uh, the new setup, I guess you could say. It's a consequence of the new setup. If the cat would stay in the little bookcase there, yeah, actually, that'd be a great little place for it. Anyway, looks like there's a high stick coming up to Alexander Holtz. Yeah, he looks pretty bummed about that. He's going to skate to the ban uh, penalty box. Where is this? Right here. He gets it. And, oh, it's a trip. Never mind. It's a trip. And look at that. He knew it as soon as his stick got there. He just, whoop. I did not mean to do that. And this is all of a sudden going from bad to worse. Oh, it's actually going to be called a hook. Okay. Bad to worse. For Team Sweden, who now finds themselves shorthanded for the next minute and 55. And, yeah. Back and out of play. Interesting. Sweden, penalty kill, 75%. Russia power play operating at like 25% so far this tournament. So keep that in mind. There's a good battle of special teams coming up. Uh, so we're going to see what happens here on this face-off. Outside of the Sweden zone, Russia wins the face-off. 9.51 to go in the first period. Now we find ourselves inside the last 10 minutes. Russia dancing and darting across the line. Philip Broberg not often beaten to a puck like that, but beat to the puck uh, just like that. 1.36 to go now in the power play for Russia. They're back in their own zone after a clear. 9.34 in the period. we got to watch these seconds tick off and hopefully result in a couple more shots for Team Sweden. It's been a weird evening so far for them, so I'd like to see them get something going here. It's uh, Russian dominance so far in this game, and it'd be nice. Let's see if they can get it going. Big save there by Wallstedt, who just watched his defense get absolutely walked around. I mean, Andre didn't stand a chance, and I mean, Podkolzin is everywhere on the ice in this one so far. Look at him dance. One, two, Three, back to the net, and that's a stick to the pad and a toe save by Wolstead to get the job done. But goals, and he's crashing the net. He's got two goals, one assist, five shots on Tuesday versus Austria. And you'd like to see him obviously perform if you're a Vancouver Canuck fan, but if you're a Team Sweden fan and obviously a Philip Broberg fan, you want to see... Uh, Philip Broberg out duel him this evening. All right, puck out of the. Let's see what we got going. Down the ice. Look at that nice turnover by the Swedes. Sorry, I just really needed a drink there. Eight thirty-six to go in the first period. Russia in on the attack, though, again on this power play. Shot from the slot, blocked in front by Soderblom. And now Russia's going to fire maybe a shot. Nope, maybe a something. They're thinking about doing something. They're going to find a cross-crease slot. Pass back. There's the one-timer blocked in front by the defenseman and fired out by Andre, who finds it 13 seconds to go in the power play. Solid. All right, that's quick. The Russians move a lot faster than I've seen a lot of teams move in this tournament, so it's been nice so far. 
what I got to say, Sean. I have no clue really other than points what uh, Quinton Byfield did in the tournament. You like to see Pod Coles and a little bit of sportsmanship, gamesmanship maybe, tapping the pads of his competitor, Wallstead. All right. Askarov plays it, last second of the power play. Now back to even strength, 11-4 the shots with eight minutes to go in this first period. Offside are the Russians at the line. That's okay. That's all good. You know what? Set up a chance to go to commercial break, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get it going, shall we? And Broberg hasn't looked like himself. Uh, well, I, I think the reason Broberg, in my mind, hasn't looked like himself, if I'm agreeing with you, Adam, is just simply he hasn't gotten to play the offensive game, right? That shot we saw him take, that's Broberg. That was a beauty of a blister of a shot, perfect position to receive the puck, everything. Great. And defensively, yeah, that one play off the wall on the attack there as they entered below the goal line did the Russians. He got beat, and that's not very Philip Broberg skating backwards either, so that's weird. But, I mean... The biggest change, he's had to play defense, and that's something I don't think any of us are comfortable or used to yet watching Philip Roberg do is play defense against elite competition. That's something very few of us have had to do. <laughs> that's for sure. That's for sure. So, let me see here. As we are sitting here so far, ooh, look at that, in one hour on that... First hour of the live stream, 7 to 8 p.m. We ended up seeing 900 people come on by the Dolany TV channel. That's a little bit of insanity for you on a Wednesday evening. As my friends, I appreciate everybody coming on by and tuning into the live stream so far. A total of 962 people have stopped by tonight's live stream so far. We've been live now for over an hour and 21 minutes. Sure seems like I've talked a lot. <laughs> and Keegan, you're having yourself a night. Well, hey, one day removed from being done 2020, why not celebrate? 7.47 to go. Well, guess what? That's uh, that's what it is as Russia turns over the puck trying to set up the attack. Now Sweden firing a shot. They get a second opportunity stopped by the Russian defense. And look at Sweden. They're going to finally get this puck across. Shot deep into the zone. They're going to go to work behind the Russian net. They've been successful down there. They don't have a lot of shots to show for it. But behind the goal line, they've been successful. And that's the thing, in. I have to remind myself to breathe. How about we go back to the point? That's going to be shot fired by Soder, or Soderstrom, who sees it blocked in front. Now... It's going to be blocked again there by the Swedes. They've had a couple key blocks to block up a couple of really good-looking opportunities, potentially, for the Russian attackers. This one goes all the way across. That there blocked and tipped out of the zone by the Swedish defense. 11-5. The shot's on goal. 1-0. One one, oh, sorry, that's a phone ringing. I couldn't figure out who was coming in the door. It's a phone ringing. 1-0, Russia leads. With 6.36 to go in this first period, I hear a little itty-bitty kitty out my door. 6.28 now in this first period as Sweden advances into the zone. Russian player takes out a Swedish player in front of the net as Askarov makes a glove save. 12-6. 12-6 we find ourselves playing this game right now, currently in the the first period up to 31 likes on the stream my goodness what am I doing right tonight compared to every other night I guess I gotta just sit here and natter about the game in a kind of sing-songy matter as I should do as I normally do in a junior B play-by-play -play stream if I'm doing it face off called back 623 in the first period 12 6 the shots for Russia they've uh, definitely dominated this first period the best chance for Sweden this period was the Philip Broberg blast off the glove of Askarov is what it is. And they uh, did not manage to score a goal on that one. Shot into the zone by the Russians. Back and there you go. Another icing call. That's been the weird part so far this game. I think that's the really tough part for me as a fan of hockey flow. That first four and a half minutes after we got the... Goal called back and to start the game inside 1923 to about, what, 
15.30 of the first period, we ended up having a lot of fun open hockey, some good chances, some good possessions, some good play behind and in front of the nets. But uh, unfortunately, nothing resulted of that special. And now Russia, yes, they scored the goal on the tip of the attack uh, around the net backdoor goal, but not much, uh, not much going. And Ron, welcome in. Where is live stream? Where is the live stream? Well, it's the live reaction stream, Ron. Unfortunately, I, uh, I do know what the title looks like. Trust me, I know what I'm doing. But now six minutes, face off at center ice here for Sweden. And Russia, they win it back to the Swedes. They're going to work this place out. They're going to work it down. 5.52 to go. And ooh, here we go, Michael. I'm liking what you got to say. As the Swedes get into the attack, that doesn't look too positive. But what does look positive is the fact that the Swedes stayed on side there. They're going to jump into the attack. That one hits number 20 or 15. I thought that was Broberg as soon as I saw the five, but thankfully it wasn't. Sweden get oh man, talk about a knuckle puck! Talk about a knuckle puck! And what a shot to just get a stick on that, let alone score the goal and backhand it back of the net. Just I think even off of the shaft of the stick, not even the blade of the stick. Sweden come alive! That one gets you a one nothing, one nothing, one one tie. Come on, Tyson, you're paying attention, aren't you? This one just an innocent play, and I mean, Sweden has played well behind the Russian net tonight. This one just goes backhander, and they just snap it into the back of the net. And you watch this one bang, and Cosmer just swats that backhand like he's playing baseball. And ooh, five hole on Yaroslav Askarov. I don't think you can ask him to have that one. That's just one of those that he's going to hit it or he's not, and it's going to go where it's going to go, whether it's back of the net or not. Arvid Cosmer, second to goal of the tournament. Assist to Gundler and Holmstrom. And you've got yourself a 1-1 game. Come alive. Now suddenly we get a chance to hopefully see some Philip Roberg play at 5-on-5. Five five, but it looks like it's going to be a power play with Philip Roberg coming up. And Keegan, Broberg's stats right now, all I can tell you is he has a shot. That's about all I can tell you. And I know he's not a minus. I don't have time on ice statistics or anything. Let me see if I've got a summary or anything here on TSN I can get you information on. I don't know if he's been leading in time of ice or whatever, but um, let's see. Philip Roberg, so far they don't have any stats. Yes, for Wallstedt having a great game now. Obviously, Askarov having a little bit worse. Victor Soderstrom, the two shots on net. Simon Holmstrom, another point tonight. And let's see, shots are 12-7, penalty minutes, two apiece. The goals, one apiece. And we find ourselves a 1-1 one, one game alone in front of it. Never ends well, well. Let me tell you, when you know how to put your hands on a puck like that, it's not going to end well for the opposing goaltender at all. Hudson, welcome in. Glad to have you along for tonight's live stream as well. Glad to see you. Join us finally, I guess I could say. And let me tell you, we're just on commercial break right now, so I'm going to tell you uh, right now, I'm going to send a commercial your guys' way. Let me know if you get it, because that's always the interesting part for me to know if people get the comments or not, or commercials or not. Sorry, my bad. Make words, not enemies. And let's see what we can do. 2021 World Junior Championship, we're back. And that's a hook or a trip or is something. That's an awkward play. And what a play there by Goonler to get it to the front of the net. I, I don't care about the man being in front of the net as I care about that backhand flip into the pause device by Goonler to score that goal. Groshev goes for hooking. Ooh, that's a solid name, Groshev. Groshev? Groshev. Definitely Groshev. Now you've got the Swedish power play looking out there. You'll see Broberg at the one-minute mark of the power play. They go with a bit, pretty much all righty power play except for the left-handed Soderstrom in front of the net who just stands there and gets in the way. That's his specialty. That's all he goes. All right. Come on. Get it going. Shot and save. As that's the save by Askarov. Six foot seven or six foot eight? I've I've heard different now, according to Ray Ferraro. But just look at him. How does Askarov supposed to see around that? How? You tell me how. And of course he takes face offs too. Nutty, absolutely nutty. 
Now Sweden gets powered off the puck, but that's why you got the right-hand shots out there on the right-hand point. Tell you, that's how you keep a puck in. And now, puck played there. It's going to go back to the blue line, and they're going to dance around with it a little bit. There's Soderstrom playing a little fancy. He's going to rip a shot, and again, Soderblom in front of the net, making a tough glove save for Askarov. Give it to him. He's made two glove saves this power play. Minute 15 to go, I'd expect. We get to see Philip Broberg on the Swedish power play now. I'd expect, anyway. That's uh, that's just me if I'm a betting man. As this one goes off of anyone in front. Maybe off of Soderblom's leg just a bit. Not enough to be a regular deflection. But look at that. First things first. Philip Broberg sees it go past him at the blue line. 4.15 to go in the first period. Broberg now... Carrying it out, he's going to get into the attack, and now watch the Swedish defender. Wow, look at that dipsy doodle at the blue line to step over that puck and not throw his man offside. Beautiful play by Broberg there, and I mean, realistically, is it an impact play? No, it's not. It's just nice to see a guy keep his balance instead of whoops and out like he possibly could have and made a fool of himself, but... The Swedish power play, again, a puck at the blue line, gets past Philip Broberg. Tough to watch that. But at least action continues. Now Broberg gets a chance to set it up. And instead, lazy, lazy, lazy play. Comes up with the puck. But almost turned it over to the Russian attacker on the penalty kill. He's looking for a pass. Maybe trying to do a bit too much. He's just skating through the neutral. Shielding the man. Goes back to the point, And now he's got to play some defense here. Maybe not. Maybe so. This Sweden power play is discombobulated. This second unit has not. I repeat, has not looked good so far. Soderstrom jumps the ice, and he flips it in on Askarov, and mercifully, the Swedish power play is over. That was rough. I will not deny that. That was a rough, rough chance on the power play for Sweden. I'm not impressed. That was rough. And that's a beautiful, still beautiful Backhand pass by Gundler to get that one in. And it's not Gundler as I'm saying it. It's Gundler. Like, not Gundler, but not Gundler. Gundler. It is what it is. That's all right. Puck comes in. On the Russian stick in their own zone. The Swedes, they turn it over. They're going to go back down to their man on the board. Nice no to the, see that he's there, but... Over the zone it comes on a Russian poke check. And this Swedish attack, yeah, sure, they might have 10 shots... But it's interesting that that Swedish power play went so awry. I mean, right, we saw them just walk, but you got to believe. Ooh. 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 That is, e. That got Johansson in a not-so-nice spot. That uh, Watch this replay. If you can, you've probably already watched it, but watch how Johansson goes down, and I think it's his stick that jams him, if I'm not mistaken. So coming back the other way, that's Pud Colson. He goes down, and then Johansson gets, uh, is it his stick, or is it Pud Colson's stick in the gut? Right there? Or is it, ooh, ooh, ooh. That's nothing. That's the leg extension there. Oh, wow. That's a pulled groin if I've seen one. That's definitely a pulled groin. And I mean, he caused his own injury more or less, but... Wow. That's tough. Wow. Pud Colson, though. Definitely. Definitely. That's something. That's something in the midsection or groin area. And that... uh Something along the leg doesn't feel too good either, I don't imagine. Something straight up the side is hurting. That's all I got to say. I'm no doctor. Uh, I know a couple nurses, but I ain't no doctor. Uh, so let's see what this team can do now on the penalty kill for pretty much the rest of the period. Sweden, from bad to worse, it goes again. Give up an opening goal, tie it up, get a power play, absolutely crap the power play, and now find yourself on the penalty kill not two minutes later. Philip Broberg out there killing this penalty, though. Look at that. Nice to see. He's got gap control, and he doesn't have to face the shot as it gets blocked in front. Sweden clears the puck. A minute 39 left in the first period, my friends. 
We're almost a third of the way through this one, hopefully. Maybe we see overtime. How nutty would that be to see some overtime tonight? Minute 29 left in the first. The Russians trying to get a power play group together here in the last minute of their power play. They just, uh, there we go. They crossed the blue line. But it gets past the attacking player's stick, so maybe now. Ooh, I'm not liking that, Michael. I'm not liking that. So give me a second here. As the Russians trying to get a puck to stay in at the point, it's going to be turned over. And ay, 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 ay. Just absolutely dismantling. Dismantling the Russian or Swedish defense where the Russians on that attempt. Jeff, it's been a good game, but uh, not so much if you're a Russian fan. And watch this one. Wow. Oh, my goodness. <sighs> Who am I watching right now? The Edmonton Oilers? Darnell Nurse over there playing defense in the corner for Sweden? What was that? Seriously, what was that? <laughs> wow. Sorry, I want to watch the wide angle on this because this is, this is brutal. The, the Swedish defenders way, way in the corner. But Colson has all time in the world. Oh, and I mean, look at that. You almost saw, you almost saw the Swedish goalie make the save. Wallstedt almost made the save. If that's what I have to watch for 56 games this season, I uh, might not make it all 56 games. Thank goodness that wasn't Broberg. Thank goodness that was not Broberg. That's all I'm going to say because that was brain dead defense. And unfortunately, that's leaving your goaltender out to hang to dry. 30 seconds to go in this first period. That is, that's embarrassing. But uh, I mean, hey, you can't be perfect at all times. They left him 2 on 0 in front of the net. The guy in the corner took way too long. Here's Broberg in on the attack. He's skating around the back of the net, and that puck is still with Broberg. They're still kids, absolutely. Absolutely, Jeff. But I mean, all right, that's tough. That's absolutely tough. You can't. If you're playing Russia in a game like that, you just can't. Uh, can't make a play like that. That's that's what I'm saying. Is it's just not a play you make. Go chasing in the corner. But my friends, the end of the period is upon us. I'm gonna throw you a commercial, and as soon as that should be done, I'm gonna throw myself to uh, the upstairs bathroom, and then I'm gonna come back down and we'll talk all things in this intermission, ladies and gentlemen. Of course, I've got a couple of things here for you for intermission entertainment. If you're in the chat and you haven't already, I want you to do two things. All right. If you're in the chat, I want you to check out this hockey playlist for me. It's a hockey playlist all filmed by me. This is all my content collected over my years as a broadcaster. It's currently available in the chat via the YouTube link I just posted. And definitely, if you have a chance, please subscribe to my man, X Snipe Edmonton Oilers, because, simply put, he's the reason I'm live. That said, you've got a three options of things to do while I'm gone. I don't want to hear anyone complaining that I'm gone. I'm just being goof. All right. Enjoy. Here? Good? Good? This is Dolany TV. This is the Dolany TV front license plate. What a beautiful piece of merch put together by my buddy up in Cold Lake. Well, let me tell you, you ever see this driving around? You probably want to get off the sidewalks. Just say it. This is Dolany TV. And that was nothing but net. This is Dolany TV. You may be wondering why I'm standing out here in nothing but a tank top in about minus 15 degrees Celsius weather. Well, let me put it to you this way. Why do people cheer for the Calgary Flames? Exactly. Some things just don't make sense. This is Dolany TV. This is a piece of cardboard. That is a towel. And if that towel could speak, it would tell me, no, you're a towel. This is Dolany TV. Hold on, hold on. Let me, let me take this from a different approach, all right? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Tyson Dolany, and welcome into Imperial Oil Place in Cold Lake this evening. It's the Cold Lake Ice versus St. Paul Canadians in Game 4 of the NEA JBHL Round 1 Playoff Series. It's Right? I think so.
Now that's timing. Do I know what I'm doing or do I know what I'm doing? I am uh, I am a professional when it comes to this. And look at that. I'm just looking at myself on the screen here, just adjusting the phones. The phone, the chair. What am I talking about? Sorry, pardon me. Is let's get this going. All right, let's see what we get going. Uh, so there we go. Bang. Let's get to this, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed that. How's, uh, that South Park reference, Michael. Somebody actually got it. Second time around. Second time around, somebody actually got it. And yes, the outside me uh, talking about the Calgary Flames is uh, absolute gold. You guys are right. That is that was uh, that's what started those shorts. So I'm like, oh, I got the perfect idea, and then I ran outside in a tank top and decided to take a shot at the Flames. There's no other stand. Probably one of my better moments in December. All right. What we need to know about that Sweden-Russia game in the first period. Shall we get to that? I think we shall. 2-1 Russia after the first period. Shots, 14-10. So it ended up being a lot closer than it looked like. But 14-10, the shots, the penalty minutes. Four for Sweden, two for Russia. A man injures himself on a penalty. That's so sweet in this game. Afenisev scores the goal Abramov and Gritzik get the assist for Russia to open the scoring 728 into the first period then you have Kosmer from Gundler and Holmstrom and Amirov on that disaster of a play from Bud Colson and Kuznutinov scores the secondary assist 1914 to go in the first period Rodian Amirov who had a fantastic period Driving the net, scoring a goal that got called back. He's had some nice plays. And unfortunately for him, not getting it going. It is what it is. Alright. Oilers versus Flames. Conference finals. That would be epic. Unfortunately, that's not going to happen. Division finals. It may happen, it very may well happen, but conference finals, we will have to wait at least another year for it best. It just is the reality of the situation. Ladies and gentlemen, what I will tell you, if you enjoyed that first period of coverage here on Dolan TV, please, if you can do me a favor and you want to stick around for Edmonton Oilers hockey this season, consider hitting that subscribe button. We're up to 8,320 subscribers. If we can hit that 8,325 mark tonight, that'd be fantastic. And quickly, I just want to take a look around Hockey YouTube and see what else is going on. But first, to the NHL and Edmonton Oilers insiders list on Twitter. As we got going, um, let's see, what do we got going on here? Got to be careful as the World Juniors can be deceiving with some in their first tournament, others in the third. Pod Colson looks like a player, big, skilled, strong, and fast. That coming from Mark Spector. Canucks training camp roster has been released. Ooh, looks uh, looks like we very well might get some updates from the Oilers tomorrow now that we've got our stuff going on. Mr. Broberg has seen a lot of red in the last 14 minutes. Yeah, that's tough as well for him. And what have we got? Some coverage on Germany, and that's about it. So we haven't missed much in the Edmonton Oilers. Thing to go. What's the estimated timeline, do you think, on the Oilers need to win a cup? Well... Uh, no, it's uh, it's the fact that the Oilers need to go out there and watch uh, watch for the cup every single year. They need to be winning cups now. I think the timetable is set, and now it's just a matter every year get better and get more cups. That's that's got to be the plan now. I'd say at least. I don't know. I again, I just want to watch hockey. I, I'm not putting any real big, hard, fast rules on it. I just want hockey back ASAP. Right now, you've got John with Hot Take Hockey currently enjoying a live stream as well, and Gra Gravita, good man Nathan over there as well, getting uh, getting that going. But I just wanted to mention them as well as they're getting it uh, getting it going tonight. So what I've got is apparently, according to Lego Rocks, the Canucks are actively timing in with Sammy Vatnin, and of course you've got a couple other options on Hockey YouTube this evening. You got the Hockey Eye reviewing. Germany versus Switzerland's World Junior Game. You've got William Nylander's season preview with the Maple Leafs. You've got Zdeno Chara signing with the Washington Capitals. That's the big news of the day. And, of course, Ryan Callahan lost in everything, retired today, a 
player a little bit gone too soon potentially for a lot of uh a lot of it going anyway what do we got going on i'm gonna throw you one more of those that'll be it for that and realistically i want to take a look at the box score if i can so far who's the minuses for sweden apparently we're not keeping track of plus minus so Okay, were both goals on the power play for Russia? I don't think so. No, apparently we just don't keep track of uh, plus minus in the TSM box score. Okay, if anyone can suggest a really good box score for the IHF double uh, tournament here, that'd be great. As we've got really nothing of note, Wallstedt has allowed two goals on 14 shots for an 850 save percentage. Naskarov now sitting at a 900% save percentage so far. And realistically, it's a 2-1 game for Russia over Sweden after the first period of play. That's what we know. That's what we understand. And with that, I'm going to give you an update here. I'm a numbers guy. I don't know if you know that. Maybe you do. But um, let me see what we got going on here for numbers. How about I throw some numbers your way? I was talking about the views in that hour. That realistically means nothing. On YouTube nowadays I'm not saying I don't appreciate you guys coming in and tuning in but YouTube is a lot more than just what the views are after anymore so to give you a metric that really amazes me and tells you how uh, how how amazing this live stream and these live streams are to me I got to tell you this right here the watch time in that hour where we had 900 views 2,000 2,000 minutes watched in one hour. Just for reference what 2,000 hour minutes is, 2,000 minutes is 34.2 hours of content watched in one hour. That's 7 to 8 p.m. Everybody that tuned into this live stream and on the channel on Dolany TV tuned in and, and helped me hit 2,100 minutes or 34 point whatever hours of watch time. Thank you for that. And with that, I say, well, why not have ourselves a heck of a hockey game to finish out? Two more periods. Down a goal is Sweden. Philip Broberg, he's uh, having some Russian nightmares here in this game. Unfortunately, just not getting much uh, much in the way of allowing his game to go. Um, all good, Jeff. I, I appreciate that. And you guys, that's the thing. is, um, I'm not begging for the watch time. I don't want to be that guy. But if you can sit there and... Yeah, you walk away, and you can leave me on. If it doesn't cost you anything extra, hey, I appreciate that. Quentin Byfield with Ryan Rashog on the TSN feed right now, who had six points, by the way, in that game against Switzerland. Everything he did, he did right against Switzerland. It was a very solid game. And Lego Rocks 99 here on Twitter told everybody to calm down. But it was nice to uh, see him go out there and dominate a game, yeah, sure, it's against Switzerland, but he went out there and got the job done and scored a couple goals, scored a couple big ones, and really enjoyed what he had to um, had to offer, I guess you could say, for Team Canada in that game. So now, what I got to tell you is Pimp's talking about the Habs, Leafs, and Nux fans are the worst on Twitter. There is no worse fan base on Twitter, whether it be the Oilers, Flames, Canucks, Jets, we're all a mess. We're all our own unique mess. And we all claim somebody's worse. But end of the day, we're all worse than the other. Because we're all just the same disaster. We're Canadian hockey fans. Right, guys? We go stir crazy in the winter if we can't strap the skates on. I know I am. So, right? <laughs> Let's be honest. Anyway, Jeff, you like to help? Hey, I appreciate that. Appreciate that a lot. It's Fulham, Tottenham. Second match this week. Okay. Let's see, anything else? Any, can I find anything else to give you? I got to tell you, definitely throw this in the chat one more time for my man, x Snipes Oilers. And I got to quickly see what this comment on Dolan TV is. Looks like you guys have been tuning into some videos as well while I'm at what I've been doing here. And uh, let's see. What we got going on here? A couple of comments I haven't replied to is what it is. Unfortunately, that's the hard part. I've started getting so many comments, I can't exactly reply to everything in a timely manner. And then by the time you go to reply, something new's happened. 
What I need to tell you, though, I guess while we've got some time as Bob McKenzie takes up my television screen, is the fact, my friends, that we are back. Yeah, it is, uh, we've got, yeah, we've got him back. Here for tomorrow, Tyson Dolany from Dolany TV. T-Mac, welcome in. We'll uh, be back live with you tonight, tomorrow night for that, uh, now, what do you call it? Oh, I don't know. Team Canada game versus Finland? Spit, spit, spit it out, Tyson. Come on. Get that out. Yeah. All right. Team Finland, Team Canada. Tomorrow at 4 p.m. We'll be back live at 3.30 p.m. for that one. And oh, by the way, Sweden plays the USA tomorrow night. And oh, by the way, I will be live for that as well. Doing the double header to close out the preliminary round after doing the double header on Boxing Day. How about that? Not bad. A Saturday night doubleheader and a Thursday night doubleheader and we get going with a crazy afternoon and evening of hockey tomorrow let me tell you I'm looking forward to that what do we got to say here the rest of the way home well let me see let's just see what YouTube's telling me what we got to say the rest of the way home so far would you look at that all right doing good so far the crazy part to me is 310 end screen clicks. Okay, that's uh, that's some numbers here. Let's quickly refresh. See how everybody else is rolling in their live streams. 134, 152. I guess there must be a couple of live streams of the game here on YouTube available. So guys, I appreciate you tuning in and spending your evening with me. And who is who's had the better play, Keegan? I think that's what you're asking. I think Rush has been more solid. Problem is, Russian goaltending, not exactly solid all tournament. Could be a turning point if Sweden gets some more shots on net. And Euler, yes, there are only two Euler's prospects, that being Broberg and Holloway in this IIHF tournament in the World Juniors this season. Now, what we need to do is simply sit here and find out what we got uh, going before this game gets resumed. Realistically, this has been a pretty dead intermission. I'm saying there's not enough to talk about to sit here and have a full intermission report, and that seems kind of silly to say, but it is what it is. Realistically, normally we have a full intermission to get through, but that's not quite the... Uh, not quite the case this intermission. Realistically, right? I mean... 2-1 game, great, but it went quick, and it was a good hockey game, right? No standout performances. Yeah, Vasily Colson looks good, but he factors in for one assist, so he, uh, he doesn't go out there and dynamically change the game. Yes, he's been pushing the pace of play, but um, yeah, I mean doesn't show up in the goal scoring column so can't exactly sit here and get it going is what it is but um Jeff these teams are all too closely matched all at least the top four or five teams I think yeah it could be interesting to see what these top four or five teams evolve into going into the quarterfinals if there's an upset in the quarterfinals we could have a lot of fun with who wins gold let me tell you that USA Russia Sweden and Canada and Finland. Yes, there's a lot of good options, and I mean, remains to be seen what happens here. And Kay, you're going with uh, Bears contract, good, bad, or fair. How about good, fair? Can I say good, fair? It's both. It's a little bit of both. That's all it is. A little bit of both because, yeah, you get them on a two-year deal for two million, and that ends up being a steal next year probably. But unfortunately, this year two million a little bit too much in my opinion so what do you do I don't know I don't know what you do it's a tough question to ask but I guess we'll figure it out as this season goes along all right this intermission seeming to last a lot longer than any other one I don't know they having problems with the ice at Rogers place or something that's a once or twice a season thing in Edmonton and Oh, there we go. We're actually back. We're back. Gordon Miller's talking about uh, the called off goal for Russia. So yeah, actually, technically, we forgot to mention that a goal was called off for Russia within the first 37 seconds of the game. And Lane, do I think we'll be able to re-sign Nuge? Absolutely, I think we are able to re-sign Nuge. Does Nuge want to re-sign? Well, I guess that's a 
question of if we're offering them the right number and right term. And Jeff, you got snow in Japan. I only imagine that to be beautiful. That's all I gotta say. Dan, the second period's starting now. Well, we're getting close to it. On my uh, my feed, anyway. Pod Cole's in the eye. He's been buzzing. He's been all over the play, but other than that assist, where it was right place, right time, but it was more so the uh, Swedish defender costing that play rather than Vasily Pod Cole's in making that play. Um, well, I guess it'll be interesting to see what he does the rest of the way home in this one. As this one won back by the Swedes, I guess more so pushed forward by the Russians. Never's Pod Colson coming out of the gates hot and ready. Ooh, a little Caesar reference to go in this second period. But here come the Swedes back the other way. They're going to drive this one. Drop it out. Oh, my goodness. Oh, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Dropping it. Sorry, that leads to a chance for the Russians. Pod Colson gets two shots at it. Stopped by Wallstedt twice. But an absolute, absolute, um, tough, tough, stupid play by the Swedes. Tried to get too fancy with it. Here's what it is. As Trent, I think one thing is for sure. Just like football this year, none of these guys are in top shape. You can really tell the teams playing back-to-back -back nights so far. Well, I'm going to tell you, it's going to be interesting to see uh, kind of how Connor McDavid comes out of the gates. That's about the only one I'm really concerned about, is how Connor McDavid, Leon Dreisel, and Nugent Hopkins come out of the gates. Yamamoto, he's a, he's a hard guy to probably get out of shape kind of deal at his size. 2-1, Russia leads. They're getting out of their own zone. Maybe eventually here, Sweden turn over pucks behind the net. They've been effective back there. Shot backhand on Askarov, out of the corner. Makes the save. A little bit of pushing and shoving between the Swedes and the Russians behind their own net. And you see they're all rocking sweaters. And looks like one guy's in bed with the dog. Nice, good job. Enjoying the dog pupper time. And somebody's got a sign. Somebody's got themselves a beverage. Yeah, it looks like an all-right night, all right night in Russia to be watching some hockey in Edmonton. Let's go. AHL is planning to start on February 5th. Yes, Michael, that is an exciting one for us. That's for sure, as we'll get to see our young guys back on the farm team early January, or late January, early February. And they get to play a 44-game schedule by the looks of it. This one, blocked in front. Now you've got... Chance, ooh, bad turnover by the Swedes in their own zone. It's dumped into the corner by the Russians who try to come up with this puck. Philip Broberg out. Oh, no, that's Johansson who's back out there after that injury, by the way. He's back battling and looking sharper than ever, ready to go to work in the defensive zone. He comes up with the puck, headmans it ahead off the boards. It's turned over there on a neutral zone play to the Russian side. They'll get out of their own zone, up the boards into, into the zone. And it is what it is, is this one. Played out by the Swedes. Not going anywhere fancy. Shot in. And that is what it is. As Sweden still failing to set up a full attack in this second period. But it looks like we've either gotten offside or something coming up here. And there you go. There is the Swedish side. There's a lot of yellow and blue. There's a lot of yellow and blue in those shots of the Swedish fans. A lot of yellow and blue, let me tell you that. As uh, is the dub starting as well, I do not think the WHL is starting up on the 5th of February. I think their plans will be delayed probably until end of February at best at this point. As in on the attack goes the Swedes, they're finally there, they're finally, but again, they're behind the net. That's where they've been most effective. Nothing in front of the net, nothing in the slot. Behind the Russian net, the Swedes have been dominant. 17.49 to go in the second period. This one's zipping along quite quickly now all of a sudden. Helps when you don't have a 10-minute delay in the start of the game. Shot saved by Askarov. And there's a player who just took something to the midsection. And I, yeah, 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 somebody's upset about that. As Holtz is down. He is down. And if it is eight hours ahead in... Sweden. So if it is currently six four a.m. in the morning in if it is four a.m. in Sweden, it's probably about 
just after 7 in Western Russia. I'm thinking. I'm thinking. All right. Keegan, I, I can't look that up that quickly, and we got a hockey game to watch here, so I don't have time to watch look that up, unfortunately. Bjornfoot and Put Colson talking. Two, uh, two guys wearing letters. Just watch this replay here as Kuznetsov comes around and... Ooh. Ooh. Sneaky, not so sneaky play there by Kuznetsov. And Hudson, hopefully Broberg gets something going here. like to see him on the ice. He is out there. 6.42 a.m. Thursday in Moscow. And that, my friends, is why Tim has the blue moderator's wrench. That right there is the kind of things you can come to expect from Tim and the Edmonton Oilers streams coming to you live starting January 13th. Tim, that was about as excellent of a way you could enter the stream for the first time as I could possibly draw it up. Excellent work, sir. Let's get to it. 17.04 to go. The hammer's out. The hammer's in, I guess you could say. And we got to see what happens here as Broberg trying to make the play happen. It's not going to happen for him there, but it comes across to the Swedish other defender, and they're going to get it up the ice, and Soderblom, because he's on the other side of the ice, sees the, uh, sees the uh, puck go past him. Tough to go. Keeping a low junior hockey profile. Tim, that's all right. That's all good. You know what? This is just warm-up. These are warm-up rounds, and I mean, thankfully... Uh, Thankfully, things haven't gotten too out of control. Just a couple uh, goofs there on the 27th. And we've been pretty good in the chat so far, so definitely got that going. Uh, Jason, you put 5K on Sweden. All right. All right. Well, I mean, plenty of time for it to turn around, and I'm hoping it pays off. I love, I do love when everybody comes in and they, uh, <laughs> I do love when, the folks that are betting on the game do come in a live stream. It gives that extra kind of gives that extra kind of incentive to watch extra hard, right? Is now you've got a reason to cheer because you're cheering for somebody to hopefully have something positive happen in their life, right? A little bit of money on a game never hurt nobody, even if it is five be bucks with your buddy or a soda or two. Sixteen o o o o o o o on the board inside the last sixteen minutes in this second period. Five seconds to go off. Now we're sitting here. Sixteen twelve. The shots. The Swedes behind the Russian net. Do I need to? Uh, do I need to tell you? Um. Yep. Yeah, nope. Nothing happening there. Ooh, ooh, Russian down now. They uh, call the play dead quick. And finally, ooh, Chishnikov, he's hurting. That is hurting. This is going to take some time to clean up. This did not look good. And, oh, I want to hear this. Oh! And that is not a small stick coming through. Oh. Oh. That one had to hurt. I mean, obviously it does because of the blood, but... Yeah. That's, uh... That's tough. That's tough. Team leader with 21 minutes and 50 seconds on the ice. 15.30 to go. Uh, Keegan, I don't want that to be misinterpreted, so I'm just going to remove that. But, um, I don't need that in here. Yeah. Um, all right. Vasily Pudkolzin, he's, uh, he's watching a teammate go down. That's never comfortable. 15.31 to go. That, uh, man, Soderstrom's a big boy, all right? Soderstrom's six foot seven. So you only imagine how uh, how long that stick is and how hard that stick comes around in that situation. Yeah, you can only imagine how much uh, that blood has to have hurt, that's for sure. So, see it going here.
1531. They're trying to get the face off underway. They're trying. I say they're trying because they're not doing it well. They do now. Face off shot from the point. Doesn't get through by Soderstrom or gets through. Who really knows? Am I really paying attention? Half partly. I got, I got a stream to run here. In on the attack comes Holtz. He gets a shot. Fire glove saved by Askarov. He's that right-handed catching dude. That's a weird situation. Holtz? And that shot, nice opportunity, but right into the glove of Askarov. Nice play to get through three Russians, though. Very solid play. And you know what I got to do? I've been wondering what's off about this live stream. How about move the chair up? That, my friends, would probably change the whole perspective, change my back a little bit. And there we go. All of a sudden, you see the voice, the uh, uh, definition of my voice come out a little bit better. 15-10. To go in the second period for Sweden and Russia, 16, 15 the shots, icing there against the Russians, and Soderstrom goes back to collect the puck. Ooh, see, look, oomph, a little bit of, little bit oomph in the voice right there. I know there's a technical term for it. I learned it in college, but I'll tell you, I definitely did not spend 23, 23 months of my life. To remember a word like that. Shot on Askarov. Big save. Not really. Just swallowed up a puck. And now 16 16 the shots. 15 01 to go in the second. And yeah, Russia has definitely been greasy in this game. They have been greasing well. And I mean, hey, you know what? It's an effective strategy, right? I, I told you, they've got the size to keep up with Sweden. And if you want to dominate, um, if you want to dominate, it does help. Mr. T, that's a good way to practice. That is a good way to practice. Unfortunately, the hard part for me is, um, is it's tougher to do that and do a live stream properly. Bulldogs fan, welcome in. Glad to have you along. Long time no see, by the way. 1447 to go here in this second period. What have you missed this second period? Dude was spitting blood on the ice. That, uh, that's what happened. Soderstrom absolutely whacked a dude in the mouth, and that had to hurt. But, okay, now you've got Philip Broberg on the ice. This is good news because I see Bjornfoot out there. Broberg back, defending. Turned over by the Russians midway through the neutral zone. And, hey, it's all good. It's all good, Bulldogs fan. Now Broberg carrying it into the offensive zone behind the net. He leaves it there. Rushes back the other way, and look at this, quickly. And I mean, on his horse back the other way, Broberg makes it look effortless to get a stick in the legs. The puck scrambled up and back the other way after a rush by the Russians. Come back, the Swedes. Now the Russians push it in the Swedish zone. There's a lot of rush, Swede, a, lot of, a lot of words going on here in a moment's time. As Sweden pushes it forward on the attack. 16-16 the shots and suddenly we're engaged in a hockey game. And imagine Soder, Soder Blum taking you into the boards on the forecheck. That could not be a comfortable feeling. That, my friends, was almost another disaster by the Swedish defense. Dude just hung his partner out to dry. Thankfully... Wallstedt, he's been a stable goalie, right? Two goals, 16 shots, whatever. Three goals, 16 shots, one called back. However you want to look at it. 13 minutes to go in this second period. Wallstedt, he's been okay. Just passable. And sometimes pretty good. It's all right. 13 minutes to go in this second period. And we find the Russians setting up the attack. Point shot, misses wide. Goes to the side of the net where it is absolutely a collision into the end boards, thankfully. Everybody gets up just fine, and now the puck comes, chopped out, and down the ice, and in come the Swedes again. They, well, they're on the attack, and this time on the half wall, but that's why it comes out of the zone. They're only on the half wall, not behind the Russian net, so they're not setting up an attack, and there you go, Johansson. He's got the puck for Sweden. Horsing back in through the neutral zone. He's racing. He's got all ahead of steam. Shot. Fired, I don't know, off the post or off the blocker of Askarov. Either way, it's back the other way. This game opening up. Russia, 1-0. Shot saved by Wallstead. I don't know what happened on that play. 
Russia came steaming in the zone, ended up with a mini breakaway from the dot down, and Wallstedt calmly, after it works itself around to the other point, makes the save, a glove save, on the shot from the wall. Whew, my goodness. Talk about opening up action. That was great to see there out of Russia and Sweden. That's for sure. Now two hours and nine minutes into this live stream, ladies and gentlemen. We're having a lot of fun tonight, let me tell ya. All right, all right. What do we got going on? Well, we got a little fun situation happening here, I'm sure. So we're up to another 515 friends coming on by the channel this hour, stopping by, saying hello. Not a bad time to have some time here on Dolan TV, let me tell you that much. And let's see what else we got going on. We've got the advertisements. And, well, not much else happening. It's just that uh, Tostitos commercial by the look of it. Or what am I missing? Is it Tostitos commercial or is it a Skip the Disc commercial? DoorDash. It's a DoorDash commercial. There we go. X, the competitor. The competitor, I'm telling you. All right, what do we got going on? We've got that, bing bing, and let's see what else. We've got a good defensive play there for the Russian player. And to qualify to try out for a junior team, it is just under 19 years old because I feel like it's a little unfair Canada got to get dog. I think it's under the age of 20, so you can be 19 or you can actually be certain age 20. I don't know, I don't know how it all works. And I, I don't know, Pim, if Wallstat's going to fall to 32. I, if Wallstat falls to 32, I don't think we pick him. I'm just going to say that. This one, shot into the zone again. Look at Askarov, looking confident with that glove today. He's made a couple snags out of fluttery pucks and, uh, well, made him look easy as well. 11.50 to go in this second period. Delusional fan dream. Well, I mean, what were you dreaming about this year? Was it uh, Seth Jarvis falling? Who was it falling? Oh, yeah, Yaroslav Oskarov. That's who we were dreaming about. Don't you worry. We've got Konovalov. Oh, wow. Ouch. That had to hurt. Two guys take each other out down to the board, and that's going to be a penalty. Yes, sirree. And that's going to come out of the zone. Penalty to the Russians. 11.33 to go. And that one was a big play on Raymond, I think. Smacked both of them to the ice the way it went. And, well, now you see both guys kind of looking on the other way. And look at that. Big time. Yeah. Like, Raymond takes the man out. But they both hit the ice hard. And I guess Raymond actually gets taken out from behind. They're... Giving each other a little, ooh, there's, there's, some, uh, there's some words said there. There were some words said there. I'm just going to tell you that. This one, going to go down the boards, and this one back into the behind-the-net zone of the Russian players. And Broberg can't keep it in, but are you blaming? Ooh, that's even worse. Never mind, Dan, I see what you're talking about. Broberg absolutely floored on that play. From bad keeping to shot on net on the penalty. Yeah, you are uh, not too impressed with that, that's for sure. However, he keeps it on side on this play, sets up the attack. Now the Swedish power play maybe gets to work. Shot on, Askarov, the big save on the one-timer from the home plate area. And the save to go. And I mean, I, I don't say Broberg's been awful. He's been out of sorts for sure. But he's had a couple of great plays. You know what? That offensive chance he took earlier in the period where he rushed to just shy of the Russian goal line and found himself having to back check, he looked great getting back. He looked really great getting back. Problem is, he had to get back, right? Okay, half a one or half of a dozen. Half a dozen, six of the other. What am I trying to say? Spit it out, Tyson. You've had a difficult night tonight. Anyway, they get Broberg off the top power play unit. That's probably a good call. But do remember, do remember Broberg was also injured for a game, so he might still be nursing that injury and not fully at 100%. And against tougher competition, that may very well shine through. Here's Alexander Holtz at the power play blue line. 
figured across by Soderstrom to Soderblum off the board, and now back to the point to Soderstrom. Soderstrom fires the shot. Ooh, man, and wow! Wow! Ooh, boy! Oh, boy! Soderstrom and Holtz just combined to fire it off the bar. That was scary. However, they continue the play. And now, coming across, Alexander Holtz can't get it going. After a deflection, 30 seconds. This Swedish power play looking a little bit more dominant. A couple of great throws to the net by Soderstrom, who's looked pretty good on the power play tonight. They're setting up the attack, and in on the attack. There's the wind-up. Nice shot. Soderblom gets a backhander there. And that's going to be pretty much it for the Swedish power play here in the next nine seconds. Holtz can't control it off his skates. Back to the point to Soderstrom. Looking to wind up the shot, he'll go across. There's the shot from Soderstrom. Gets through, blocked in front, onto a Swedish stick. Holtz wires a shot and saved by Askarov. Now you've got a chance here for the Swedish attack to get going. Soderblom in front, moving that backhand, forehand play. He does off the corner of the post. That's a beautiful, beautiful play. And now you got Holtz firing the shot again. This Swedish power play still dominating now. Five on five against the Russians. And that's going to be a call, I think. The referee looked right at it. Looked right at it. Yeah, delayed penalty coming up. You had to have seen that, buddy. How you don't call that? I don't know. But Sweden's going to get another power play here as this one's going to be fired on, blocked in front. Russia's got about six shot blocks in the past two and a half minutes. And this one. Worked back to the point. There's Broberg. He's out there as the extra attacker. Shot blocked in front. A seventh block. The Swedes are absolutely dominating the Russians. But Colson is hurting. He is tired. He is tough. And this one's going to go across. Finally touched by the Russians with 18.29 to go in the period. And wow. That one off the post. That's all she wrote for that chance. Crazy. And yeah, that's the tough part, Graham. Uh, I really don't think Canada's having a great tournament so far. They did not look too great against Germany. Realistically, Germany made them look great, if anything. And then the game against Slovakia, it was brutal. And the game against Switzerland, they lit them up again. So color me shocked if we're in for a really tough game against Finland tomorrow. All right, quickly, as we close out the 8 o'clock hour, I'm going to take a look on the phone and see what kind of things we're sitting at here. 561 views this hour. Guys, thank you for tuning in if you've tuned in. Up to 8,222 subscribers. And... Sorry, I have to reply to a comment. All right, Canada overrated? I don't think Canada's overrated. I think Canada is completely unknown. Completely unknown. Anyway, 0 for 2 on the power play, 6 shots for Sweden. We'd like to see them get going here. Philip Broberg, I'd like to see him score a goal. Shot <laughs> tipped in front, not into the net though. Sweden back to the attack, terrible chance to force it back to the man, 15 there. However, we'll see. Sweden play it back to Broberg. Go back down, half wall, far side. They'll work it in right there, back below the goal line. Back now, turn to Broberg. Broberg walking the line. He'll go back to the man. Coming off the half wall, the shot coming across. Oh, nothing happened there, Peter. Nothing happened there. And USA has a better team than Canada. Well, top end talent-wise, probably depth-wise, I'm not 100% sure. Shot fired by Sweden, missed wide, and Broberg's nowhere near. He's in the middle of the ice. 109 to go, and he's going to go back and retrieve it. Gundler coming off the ice for Sweden, and Philip Broberg going for a skate. He's going to turn it back. He's going to pretend he's Connor McDavid because he's going for a line change, and now the shot coming, missed wide of the net. Just kidding. Connor McDavid doesn't go for a line change on the power play. Who are you kidding? 
You're kidding me if you think that happens. Shot coming back from Soderstrom. Nope. He's going. Oh yeah, actually he's going to rip it. He hesitated for a second there. Thought he was going to rip it first thing. Didn't. It's on Wallstead now, who's going to flip it all the way ahead. It's going to go down off an ankle, and it's going to be played across from Holtz to a man to a man, and into the zone we go, does Team Sweden. 30 seconds left in this, uh, again, inactive power play. Really not doing much other than a couple of passes there. Half wall to Broberg, and Broberg back to the half wall. As I get all spitty because I've had some water. 17 seconds to go in the power play now. They... Continue. Ooh, that one takes a weird hop off the back of the net. And down the ice it goes out of the Russian zone. Sweden, five seconds to go in the power play. They're not going to find much productive here. Not really, no. And that's it. That's all 6.27 to go. All right. Come on. we got to get something going. 23 shots for Sweden. They've dominated the pace this period. They've been the dominant team and they find themselves down 2-1 to Russia and that should have been offside. I'm sorry the man touched it with his ankle. That counts just as much as the stick in my opinion. 6.01 to go. Second period. Puck down into the Russian zone. It's going to be played there. A nice forecheck by the Swedes to almost come up with it but back down the other way it goes. Wallstead out to play it. He's going to miss it. Russia on the attack. Now it's Going to be fired, saved by Wallstead. Another shot blocked in front. This one cleared to the point. Russia now sets up the attack, or partially might if they come up with this puck. Directed to Wallstead and gloved across the crease onto a Swedish stick. Now back the other way comes Sweden. They're in. They're setting it up. All right, here we go. Some zone time not behind the net. Nice to watch out of Sweden tonight. And this one back to the point. Everybody's going for a line change because, I mean... Why do you want to play more than 10 seconds on the ice at a time? Go for a line change as soon as you get in the offense zone. Worked out great so far. Russia in on the puck. Two men there. Back across to Johansson at the point. He's going to fire this shot blocked in front by Yaroslav Askarov. Good little save there for him. Inside the last five minutes of the second period now. And we find ourselves watching Sweden tip that one in. Good little play there. 4.50 now remaining in the second period. Time ticking away fast tonight. It's 9.04. Ladies and gentlemen, I actually think I might take the third period of this one off, quite honestly. But again, i got to cover Philip Roerick, so probably not. I'm going to be stupid and live stream this third period. Why not? Have a late night. Do I think Canada and the U.S. will meet in the semifinals? All depends where the U.S. finishes in Group B. Don't forget, they still got to play Team Sweden tomorrow night. I guess there's potential that they might face Canada in the quarters. I don't know how that math is looking out. But it also depends if Sweden wins against Russia tonight. We need a Berg bomb. <laughs> Sam, you imagine the Bush bomb and the Berg bomb from the points? Oh my goodness, bombing for the Oilers. Bombing. Shots on goal. Ladies and gentlemen, an update in that column. 24 to 21 for Sweden. 14-7 this period so far. Dan, you're going with... Ooh, there we go. There we go. All right. And, of course, Broberg's not on the ice. Uh, that is what it is. Uh, 4.15 to go. Andre keeps it in at the line. And... Here we go. Shot. Oh, man. Talk about it. Talk about it. That's tough. Weird bounce, but it's back in the net. Awesome. Absolutely weird goal, but we will take it. I think Alexander Holtz will take it to tie it up 2-2. There we go. Sweden going nuts. They are enjoying this one. That guy is insanely, insanely in a way too small of a t-shirt left of your screen there for you on TSN. Oh my goodness. That man's about to hulk out in this one. A weird bounce. Holtz off the end board. Shot. Oh, wow. Back of the net it goes. Watch this one. Holtz takes the shot. It goes off the outside post. He fires it back towards the net because the goalie's scrambling, and Askarov can't, uh, can't get it going. Watch this angle. Off the post. Holtz absolutely busts it and scores the goal. That is awfully the weirdest goal he'll score all tournament, I'm sure. And it ties it up 2-2. And now we're going to see... Yeah, I don't, I don't even know. This is great to see is... This one's going to come to the net, and that's going to be goalie interference. Yeah, that's a lean. And Sweden's going to try and set up an attack here, maybe, as the Swedish 
goalie gets out, Wallstedt to the bench. Uh, let's go uh, see what we got going here. As that's going to be goalie interference. Holtz, yeah, he just snuck that one in. He's pretty happy with that. Lucas Raymond's all about that goal. Let me get in on that, Selly. Don't you kid yourself. I want some part of that. So that's nice for Lucas Raymond to get in there with. Of course, the boys scoring the goal. Will the goal count? The goal counts. The goal counts. Did count. And now we just need a couple more goals. That's absolutely correct, Keegan. We need to see what this Team Sweden is made of late in this third period for sure. Yeah, obviously, there's quite a hopping stream between Sweden and Russia tonight. So let me just take a reason to see. As it looks like, Real Hockey, yeah, there you go. So Real Hockey is live streaming the Sweden-Russia game. I'm all the way down here, number six on the page. That could be a potential problem as to why I'm not getting anywhere, that's for sure. Hmm, interesting. All right, anyway, moving on. Power play for Sweden. That's good news for us. We're going to see what they uh, can do with another power play. They haven't been very effective so far, so... I guess we'll remain to see what we can do the rest of the way home this evening. All right. Where's my stream? Shot. Potentially coming up. Maybe. Nope. Out of the zone it goes. Did I see Finland, Slovakia? I, uh, no. I was, uh, working. Working very hard and, uh, potentially, uh, doing things with my car. Offside, Sweden. 3.08 to go in this second period. 1.37 to go in the power play. Not very productive so far, I would say. Vasily Putkolzin. He's, uh, he's looking eager to get jumping over the boards, that's for sure. It's 3.08 in the second period. Got to see if Niederbach can win this face-off. I don't know what Niederbach's doing on the power play, but I guess he's out there. He's a right-hand shot. I guess he's the fifth of the fifth, or whatever you want to call him. Soderblom out there on the power play. Evan Bouchard looking like Ted Mosby. Evan Bouchard looking like uh, Dad Goals. Yeah. As this one. 125 to go in the power play. They're going to set up, and now Soderblom... Plays it back. He doesn't even have a challenger in front of the net. He just stands there and looks big. That's what he does. He scores goals too. Shot. Blocked in front. Scramble in front of the net. It's going to go to the blue line where Soderstrom. Don't you worry. He keeps it in. He's had a good game. He's going to find this one. Holtz. Holtz. Holds. Fires. Ooh. Askarov loses control of the puck. And Niederbach gets absolutely railed to the ground. Ooh, that hurt. All right. And the save is made. And Dan, have I seen any Oilers games? Way, way too many to count. There when I lived in Edmonton, I went to about two or three a year. Uh, then when I was back in Cold Lake, I went to about two or three a year. And uh, now I've gone to two a year in Calgary. And I've gone to a couple Calgary Flames games. I actually went to just two straight-up Calgary Flames games last year. Yes, that's the thing I did. Just for the heck of it. Went uh, with my boss and, of course, went with uh, a bunch of my Oilers fans' friends to a Flames game and went to a Chicago Blackhawks game. As that fired into the glove of Askarov. Save on the Swedish power play. Shots now 28-21 in a 2-2 tie favoring Sweden. Shot. Gundler. 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 That guy rifles it top shelf every time. That's what he does. You want Gundler to score a goal? Just leave him top shelf. Let him, let him, let it be available. Alright. Shoot. Puck out of this. Out of play. Flames are one of my favorites. No, no, Hudson. Bad Hudson. No, 
Flames, Flames should not be one of your favorites. The Flames are one of the awfulest teams in the NHL. I don't care how good or bad they are. Straight up, it stands. 202 to go in the second period. Sweden, Russia, 27, 21. The shots. That is cleared out of play. That should be a penalty, and that's a fruit fly. Look at that. Oh, the old Russian player. He's a little, little bit bloodied, if I might say so myself. 158, the referees confer. You're not telling me there's a penalty coming up. But look at this one. Fired, and that one's clearly cleared out of play. Doesn't hit the camera. Doesn't hit the World Juniors savior last year. And no penalty, really? Oh my goodness, that would have been a 5-on-3 that could have changed the game. And now, 27 seconds is what could define this period for the Swedes. It's out of the zone. A missed call, but like Ray Ferraro said, we're sitting here watching the replay three or four times. The ref saw it once, and they have to make a call based on what each of the four of them saw. They saw a puck go to play off a stick of a Swedish player. Is what it is. Philip Broberg is on the ice. Let's pay attention to that instead. He's facing a tough four check on the penalty kill. He's looking for a penalty man. That's all the Swedes have been doing. Maybe they should focus on maybe scoring some goals instead of looking for penalties all game. That, that might be a recipe to success. Instead of complaining your way to winning, just go win a hockey game. I'm, I'm getting a little mad at that. Straight up. I'm not impressed with that. The Swedes have been begging to the ref every time the Russians touch them. And I am sorry, you are the bigger team if you are Sweden. Stop complaining. Play hard-nosed hockey. You oh, battled everybody else in the previous two games. Go play hard hockey. You're good at it. You guys are good at it. Do it. Friggin' do it. That's all I'm saying. 0 for 4 on the power play. Just not taking it to the net enough. When, when have the, other than that one scramble that hit Askarov and went in to tie it, when have the Swedes truly gone to work and really battled something in front of the net. Okay, you know what? Turning point, possibly, if the Swedes engage a little bit more with Sweden. Y you gotta. Y you gotta at some point. I'm sorry. That, that's And you know who did it. You know who turned me to that is Philip Broberg gets held up for an extra half second and he's, come on, that's a penalty. I want a penalty. Guys, you've had four power plays and you've failed to score. What good is a power play going to do? The Russians, they have possession. We're inside a minute left in this second period. Let me voice some anger in the intermission. That is a, it's a tough one. As the Russians backhand off the blocker of Wallstead, pointed, poked, and again, like, just come on. Just, just hit him. Just, just hit him. I know the Russians have played you greasy, but I'm sorry, you don't you don't just back down and let them play you greasy because that's how they'll play you more greasy. That's all they will do. If you back down from their aggression and their dirtier tactics of grinding you off puck, guess what? They're gonna they're gonna grind you on puck too, and I, I think we've seen that. Like I said off the start, the Russians have the size to take it to the Swedes, and the Swedes have the size to give it right back, but here they are, just um, it's not doing anything productive with it. And that's offside by Russia by a mile. 21 seconds remain in this second period, but again, a cross-check after the play. It is what it is. Afenisayev. And here we go, 27 to 21, the shots. That means there's 21 seconds. <laughs> oh my goodness, dude just gets bodied up in the face off. That was great. I was waiting to see what you were talking about, Dan. Sweden's dude just got bodied. And that's... Somehow, on the second, third, fourth try, won back by Sweden, 16 seconds to go. Sweden, well, you know what? They dominated a little bit there in that second, and now somebody's injured. Costner's injured. What's, what, what are we, what are we, oh my God. You just miss everything Russia does this game because they're just bodying guys off the puck, and 
I mean, if you're Sweden, you can't go whack them, but. Abramov's going to the box. Okay, there you go. That's that's the stuff. Who would I take, Peter? I'm taking Holloway. I like Holloway's physical game. We don't need more skill. We need physical. What do we got? What do we got? Scrumming around, scrumming around. Amirov and Cosmer. Okay, great. I don't want to watch the face off. I don't want to watch the face off. I want to watch the penalty. Oh, now we're going to watch it in super slow motion. Super slow motion. Mm. You know what? Yeah. The Swede might have dove, but <laughs> that's one of those in the IHF where, you know what? That guy's going to take that extra shot at me. They're going to call it if I go down. If I go down, it's goal. And I mean, that's that's not a, so much as a dive as an abuse of the rules, but it's what the rules are, right? That's they call it tighter than the NHL. That's not that's an NHL play where you might get called interference half of the time. That's a penalty all the time in the double IHF. So tough call for Russia, maybe, but smart play, smart play. You, you're crying for penalties, I guess. Why not get one? And at least it's tied. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, after the second period of play, it is a two-two game between Russia. And Sweden, and what I got to tell you is I'm going to go take a much needed bathroom break. I think I need that uh, very, very much. But secondarily to that, I need to run you an ad and check quickly how many of us have come through the live stream in this hour so far. We're 18 minutes in, and we find ourselves with a total of 110 folks coming on by Dolan TV this hour. Appreciate that, guys. And for whatever reason, the Roslovic video has 40 views in the last uh, hour. That uh, does not make sense. Hold on. Do we have some breaking news on Roslovic here? Let's go to the Dolan TV NHL Edmonton Oilers insider list. Swedes apparently found their legs in the first intermission, mostly dominated the second anybody's game. And Lloyd Minster, healthcare worker. Um, at this point, all three Canadian teams with affiliates in the U.S., intend to run their affiliates in Stockton, Bakersfield, Utica, respectively, but we'll have to face the issue of quarantine if recalls become necessary. And... Oh, jeez, what's going on here? <sighs> Nothing going on. All right, anyway, I don't know why the, um, whatchamacallit, the Roslovic video here on Dolany TV is doing so well, but with that, I'm going to let you take a break from the Dolany TV montage video. I'm going to give you... A second to relax, enjoy, I'll be right back.
All right, let's do it. Ooh, that was loud on your ears. Loud on my ears, too. All right. It just got confirmed that Roslovic won't go to the Jets training camp. Ah, there we go. That's what's going on with the Roslovic video. That probably makes a lot more sense than anything before. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Dolany TV. This is live coverage of the Russia-Canada game. And Emery, yes, Broberg's getting hated on a lot tonight, but, right, that's what happens when your team struggles. And the Swedes struggled mightily in that first period compared to Russia, and they're still struggling. Here we go, flashback. Oh, man. Wow, the last time Sweden lost, they lost to the U.S. in group play. That's crazy. Jack Johnson, by the way, is the guy that was contributing to that. All right, I'm going to take a second here and just quickly check some stuff out as we've got a total of... What do we got going on here? Let me see. Let me see. The Jack Rolosovic video doing very, very well. I, uh, I knew I had to get that up. It was just a discussion to be had. Nothing, a do-nothing video, essentially, but a discussion to be had nonetheless as Oilers fans. And we find ourselves sitting here seeing uh, Cosmer. They're talking about Cosmer and Amirov. Oh, yeah, actually, that's a fun fact. Let's get to it, shall we? Four consecutive penalties for the Russians. The uh, Swedes absolutely failing to score anything on the power play this game. Vasily Plutkolzin has five shots for Russia. Alexander Holtz has ten shots on goal. Alexander Holtz has more than a third of the Swedish goals. Maybe if we let Philip Broberg shoot the puck two or three times, we might get another goal. Just saying. And yes, 8.32k subscribers. It's been a crazy past uh, past week here on Dolan TV, you could say. Uh, this time, last week on Dolan TV, we were at 8.21. So we've gained 110 subscribers in the matter of a week. And I, guys, I cannot appreciate that enough. Because it's all building momentum towards what's going to be a fun, entertaining Edmonton Oilers hockey season, for sure. So let's see quickly what else we got going on here as... And see, the thing is, right? Okay. So can I explain something? We're in intermission. Um, Amrit, I do not think uh, Broberg's playing for the Oilers. He'll be back in Sweden once this tournament's over. That I almost guarantee you. If he makes camp, he probably makes the Oilers, though. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to describe something here to you. As somebody that's done YouTube now for seven years, okay, I did, I've done YouTube as Dolling TV or Yak City Gaming or whatever this channel's been called throughout the years. I've done YouTube for a total of seven years on this channel. And I've done YouTube for a long time in my life. And I've done YouTube for pretty much a third of my life. Third, just over. One thing that often gets lost on YouTube is when people get really big, right? It's all like, oh, the next thousand, the next thousand subscribers. Oh, that's a big number. And I mean, fair enough, right? You always want to be chasing bigger and better. But one thing that being a guy that's grown very slowly as I have over seven years, growing awkwardly at times, growing good at times, whatever you want to say, is an appreciation for how much 10 subscribers, five subscribers can mean. And let me tell you, you do uh, you do something interesting. Do some math with me here. And sorry, I'm just uh, I'm just doing something to throw this number at you. Do the math of five subscribers a day gained. Not not fifty, not a hundred. Five in a year, every single day is eighteen hundred and twenty-five subscribers. That, my friends. If you gain 1,825 subscribers in a year, you're doing pretty dang good on YouTube, realistically. You're doing really good compared to a lot of folks. So that's just uh, keep that in mind as we go along. Ladies and gentlemen, I see the stream jump up a little bit here as I'm explaining myself. How about we get Miss Zap up here? We drag her up here, literally. Alexander Holtz hits the crossbar. That sucks for him. It's 2-2 Russia versus Sweden after the second period. It's been a good hockey game so far. I'd just like to see... 
Sweden stop backing down from Russia. That's all. Like, Russia's big. They're going to play you tough. But seriously, seriously, Russia, it should not be bullying the Swedes the way they have been. Sweden has the ability to play them tough, and they just have backed down asking for every tough play to be a penalty. And I'm sorry, that's rough. As Mike, you're looking forward to seeing me at 10K. I'm looking forward to just hitting 9K. That's realistically, we'll get there at some point during the NHL season. Then we'll find out what happens with 10K along the way. I'm not too worried about uh, 10K. It's 9K, then 10K, then then we'll see what happens and where the goals go from there. But as we currently sit, my friends, we sit in a 2-2 hockey game and Sweden and Russia playing an awkward one. Russia dominated the first, Sweden dominated the second, and you see really nothing special happening elsewhere. Is Podkols and Holtz perhaps really like they should be the top players in the game? Both goalies with an above 900 save percentage. Philip Broberg's had, I'd, I'd describe at best, an awkward game. So make of what you will of that. It's, uh, it's fun, tough, interesting. Is what it is. I think is more how I describe it. It's a hockey game, and I mean, I expected more, perhaps, out of this game, right? I expected some great play, and it's just kind of been sad to watch Russia bully Sweden around, and then Sweden not be able to make them pay for it, and complain that they want to make them pay for it more. That's that's the frustrating part, right? I mean, they have all the capability in the world to get it done. And I mean, yeah, you can credit Sweden with, uh, yeah, I don't know. Not exactly. Uh, Don't know what to make of it. I'm trying to make of it. Josh? Oh my goodness, buddy, coming up, lighting up the old, I see, I saw blue. I'll tell you what just confused me. I saw blue and I'm like, what's blue popping up in the chat? That's not normal. Josh coming in here with 4.99 on the board, the first donor of the night. Thank you, Josh. I uh, I didn't mention that I was going live. That's my apology. Now you're getting my attention. All right, I see how it is. Uh, yeah, grinding the junior games. Well, we'll be grinding tomorrow. Beware of cat on my TV. Well, beware of the kitty on here. Isn't she cuddly? She is so cute, and she's purring. Miss bits. Sorry, who has their cap per into the mic other than Ron Dahl on TV? Sorry, there, I gotta say that. That's my longest tenured cat. That is Zap. She's been with me for a long, long time, and she'll be with me for a long, long time yet. Quick. <laughs> Hello, kitty. Oh, Zapper, she is the cutest. She used to steal the show. Orange Cat used to steal the show a lot, too. And of course, Thumper, when you guys see Thumper, you guys used to go pretty crazy because that's the kitty you guys don't get to see on the live stream too often. Anyway. Switzerland, Germany, crazy game. How about Germany qualifying for the quarterfinals for the first time ever in their uh, nation's history? Tim Stutzel with an absolute stupid goal against Team Switzerland. As jo- Josh, I was going to call you Jordan. Am I stupid? I think I might be. But anyway, Josh is, don't know, just about to come off the board once again. Thank you to you, Josh. I'm going to have to owe you some chips or something. <laughs> chips with dip? That sound okay? Josh Stutzel. (laughs) What am I doing? What am I doing? What am I doing? One goal game and a beauty of an opportunity at the end of the game for Team Switzerland, but Team Germany singing the national anthem arm in arm after the game, doing history for their nation. Absolutely incredible. Team Slovakia against Finland as well. This was a game today. That was an interesting goal by Anton Lindell. And then you've got this one here coming off the boards and up to the slot and ripped back of the net by that guy past the Slovakian goaltender. And then you have that goal, which is just absolutely at an ugly angle. Bar down back of the net. Ooh, yeah, you'd pretend that guy's about 26. 3-0 Canada, 3-0 Finland, 9 points each. Tomorrow determines everything. Germany 1-1-2. One, one, 
Slovakia, 1-1-2, one, one, and two, ending up 1-1-0-2, uh, one, one, oh, and 1-0-1-2. And one, oh, one, and two. So it's Czech Republic, Austria, Canada, Finland, Sweden versus the United States. As a Swiss-Canadian, you're sad about the Swiss losing, but Switzerland just didn't have it this year, and the Germans have had a strong showing this year. Quick. You know what? That's despite everything, right? And that's the nice part for them. Despite everything, they are the triumph story of the World Juniors thus far. So let's quickly take a look. If Josh is coming in here, that must mean a lot of other folks are stopping on by, and that does indeed a lot of mean a lot of other folks are stopping by. And don't forget as well, ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't had a chance already, let me see if I can get it to pop up here. Maybe you want to take a second to check out that Roslovic video I was talking about. Yeah, you see that? That was uh, that was what I was talking about. The Roslovic video, RE Oilers trade, right here, available for you to watch. That has a crazy amount of views this hour, and I did not expect it to go off. So, great to see something pop up. And Josh, once again, I'm still seeing it there. Thank you. And hey, if you already watched it yesterday, that's a solid. But if you're just joining us here on Dolan TV for the first time and you want to watch it, hey, wouldn't mind you watching it. That's for sure. See what I'm like actually in action. This is live streams are a whole different Dolan TV compared to the Dolan TV in the videos you get. I, I'd like to say that. And I mean, it's because I'm more into my play by play style and my everything going. And uh, Nakash, Sweden for the win. I'm hoping Sweden for the win. And everything with Mert, you're going uh, over 5.5. Could it be possible? Well, let me tell you. Sweden gets a 3-2 goal and then gets a 4-2 empty netter. Pretty possible. Same the other way for Russia. Or we see six goals in the third period and it's 10 goals total. Who knows? And who do I think will win? I think Sweden can pull this off. It just matters if Sweden wants to play hockey and get down and dirty with the Russians or if they want to... Just keep complaining about everything the Russians do. I don't know. Yes, we'll find out is what it is. But at some point, you got to see somebody go out there and make a game-changing play for Sweden. And I'd hope and prefer if that was Philip Robert. You'd have to hope. All right. Oh, this this movie looks good. <laughs> I have I have to watch that. Palm Springs on Prime Video. I have Prime Video, so I have to watch that. Anyway, I can laugh about all the things in the world, but unfortunately there is no end to these commercials on TSN. After the second period of play, let's review the goal scores. Afeniseyev from Abramov and Gritsuk for the first goal of the game. Kosmer from Gundler and Holmstrom. And then Amirov from Podkolzin and Kutsunudinov to score the second goal of the game for Russia. And then you've got Holtz, Andre, and Johansson combining to tie up the game. And my friends, I just want to see the hockey game get underway. I think right there, 2-2. Alexander Holtz, 15.59 to go in the, or 15.59 gone in the second period from Alvin Sunsvik and uh, Emil Andre. That's not what's on the TSN website. I guess Sunsvik got a touch on it, so they're going to give it to him. I'm not paying attention. But Gord Miller, Ray Ferraro, getting it going. And we're going to see what's happening here. A second period, shot, fired, saved. Third period, here we go. Well, let's fire in and let's get it going for the rest of uh, rest of the night, right? It's 9.36. It's a late night stream. I mean, it's going to be late night tomorrow as well, but at least I don't have to work on Friday is what I'd be saying. We're going to find out what happens, I guess, on Friday as it's closed New Year's Day. So here we go. Everything with Mert, we're hoping. We're just getting the face-off underway here. That's Soderblom out there for Sweden. And Sweden was on the power play. Yes, they are. The Russian taking the penalty late in that second period. 
Now we got to see as Russia wins it back, they're going to chip it in through the neutral. 149 to go in the Swedish power play. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Buckle up. Let's get it done. 1950 to go in the third period. In on the attack, the Swedes dipsy doodle to the front of the net. That puck hops. Well, sideways to the near side boards, back to the point, held in by Victor Soderstrom. He'll find the puck there, past him after the pass, back to the blue line, back into the Swedish zone. Now 126 to go in the power play as they regroup behind their own net. 2-2, the tie between the Swedes and the Russians. 1926 to get gone in this third period. And what's been an interesting game so far, ripped into the Russian zone, met there on the near side half wall by the Swedes. They'll go behind the net. This one hops out in front quickly, played there by the Swedes, but kind of takes a weird hop off a stick. And the Russians, they fire it out after regrouping behind their own net on to Wallstedt in the Sweden zone. He'll play it to the boards where it's met there by Soderstrom with 5-2 on the clock, 52 seconds to go in the power play. Holtz in on the attack. He's going to turn back before ripping a shot. He's going to look off to the option on the half wall. Now rocking there. They'll go back to the point. Soderstrom across. Oof, that's a quick play across the middle of the ice. Shot from Soderstrom. Scrambled in front. Soderblom there. Everybody's looking for it. Into the corner it goes. And back near side half wall. It meets the Swedish attacker. He'll miss the puck on the pass. He was looking off the puck. Couldn't get it going. This one going to play back down and around. And behind the net, Soderblom forces the man off the puck. He'll get back to work, but not there in time. And the Swedes to the attack once again. They set up the power play with five seconds to go off the half wall. Shot fired off of the chest of Askarov. Back again to the half wall. The Swedes go a productive slot in this power play so far. And, well, back to the boards it goes and out of the zone finally cleared by the Russians. And yes, Nakash, I am delayed. I am on the TSN direct feed and of course any online subscription they delay by 45 to 50 seconds. Not too bad, I'd say. I'm a little rusty, but the power play, play by play, not too bad there at all if I don't say so myself. Rip shot there, save Askarov. 17.36 to go in the third period. 30.22 the shots for the Swedes. The Russians, they now set up the attack, and they're going to find themselves a shot. Wallstead the save. There you go. How's that play-by-play -play for you? I haven't ripped it too much this live stream so far, but I think we ripped it not too bad there. I think we had a little bit of fun with it, if I don't say so myself. And now, let's just see what's going on. Man, that, uh, that video there by... Jack Roslevic, not doing too bad at all. Pretty dandy if I don't say so myself. And the live stream now crossing 16, 1,700 views this evening. Ladies and gentlemen, that is officially better than the Boxing Day live stream between Sweden and who was that on Boxing Day? Czech Republic. Oh yeah, I forgot. Totally. Sorry, my bad. 17.15 to go in the third period. Let's carry this home. 2-2 Two -two tie. Would love to see some overtime. Doubt we see it is what it is. 17.06 now as the Russians set up the zone attack. Defender gets in late. He'll fire a shot blocked in front by the Swedes. All kinds of traffic goes into the corner. The Russians come up with it behind the net. They'll go half wall and fire it back around to the other half wall where it's met there. A little confusion at the point as the point man comes down. The Russians still with it behind the Swedish net. They're going to tap this one back behind. And a couple of whacks of the stick there by the 23 defender for Sweden. Doesn't get the puck free. Russia circling around half wall to half wall behind the net. And back again before it finally comes out of the zone. And Sweden forces Russia back to get going for a little bit of an attack here. Kuznetsov sets it up. Turnover and a turn. I, I don't get that. And that's maybe my most frustrating part of this tournament is you see so many guys try to force the play off a turnover that they just turn it right back over. So Russia gives up possession on a turnover, they get it back right away, possession on a turnover. It's frustrating to watch, and honestly, straight up does not make any sense to me at all. It is what it is, I guess. End of the day, it's not going to change my life too, too much. But let's see. Got all the Russian fans going crazy. And now... 16-14 to go in the third period of play. And you got to believe, we're going to see something happen here. 16-08 now in the third period as Russia gets right across. Two on one. 
develops after a Swedish defender. Oh my goodness, that was not Philip Roberg. That was Johansson got beat. And well, 1556 to go on the clock. I'm kind of counting down. I'd like to go to bed, but we'll carry this one home. No problems there. Holtz fires it over. Shot saved. And well, Holtz, nice little play to play it off the back of the net. He gets pummeled. And don't tell me he's going to be looking for a penalty. No, thank you. Thank you. Good to happen. Good to see. Roberg out there though now. He's looking to set up the attack and he's going to keep this one in temporarily but not full time. That is somehow not offside. Okay. As Broberg sets in on the attack and shot and nothing. Nothing going for Broberg as he's going to dangle right. Oh my goodness. What a set of hands on Broberg leaping through the air trying to tuck that back and what a play by Philip Broberg, who's getting up slowly. I think he may or may not have just hurt his foot again. Yeah, he's looking... He's looking hurt. He's looking hurt. Get off the ice, buddy. Don't don't overplay it. I know you've been accused of that. Wow, what a shot coming in from number 14. What a... My goodness. What a shot there. That was, that was a smack just coming in. High slot, rip shot. Didn't do anything, but man, you watch a stick go that far back and go that explosive through a puck, it's nice to see. And that's going to be played off. Broberg, he's uh, he's not liking that. He's not liking that at all. And look at this. Bang, bang, bang. Almost tucks it backhand. Just loses it last second. And look at him go sliding through, and that foot goes down hard, and that leg's twisted. That leg twisted as soon as it hit the ice. And look at that. Think about that. Broberg's upset there. He's trying to get off the ice that he's got to turn around and play the puck. And look at how effortless playing that puck into a safe zone looked for him. That's the stupid part about Broberg. Is yes, it's boys against men when it comes to Broberg and the rest of the tournament, but it's so silly that a guy like that can make it look like that. It just blows my mind. This one, played there by Sweden, who's all of a sudden taking a couple of numbers to Askrov, who makes the glove save. And that power play to start the period really set the tone. And that Swede in the top circle there, he is the definition of what you expect. A Swedish man, bald, with a beard, to look like. That guy, he's a legend. He looks like a legend. Looks like, is it Matthias Oland used to for the Vancouver Canucks? I think that's who I'm thinking of. I'd laugh at if it is Matthias Oland and I just nailed it on the park. Or is it Sammy Sallow? I don't know, one of the two. Anyway. Turn back around. Two-time World Junior Champs. That's... All Sweden's won the World Juniors, 90 or 81 in 2012. You have got to be kidding me. Sweden's had all this talent all these years, and that's the only time they've won the World Juniors? Wow, okay, I thought definitely more. But anyway, this is going to be Russia playing it to the point. They're going to fire it in. This is going to be turned back over, and we're going to see what Sweden can do. They are, uh, they're just getting hacked to death and really outworked by the Russians at times, and it's kind of sad to watch as, thankfully... Amirov doesn't dangle through them. That would have been a disaster. Soderblom snaps the shot blocked in front. That's, hey, you know what? I'll give I'll give a little bit of credit here to Russia. All right? They have been just dandy. Just dandy blocking shots. Fearless, if I might say so myself. Get in front of anybody's shot. All right? That guy taking the stick to the face from Soderblom. He's back. He's good. He's tough. Just, uh... Don't ask about the secret sauce in the old uh, dressing room. I mean, right? <laughs> anyway, Sam, you're still obsessing over that Broberg play. Let me tell you, it was a dandy. 12.46 to go. Nobody giving an inch this period, right? Obviously, yeah, Sweden's had some good chances. Russia's had a couple, but nobody giving an inch. And now all of a sudden you got teams holding each other up. And now... It looks like Sweden's starting to engage a little bit. Just dig in that little half inch more. And I'm liking seeing that. I'm liking seeing Sweden dig in here. As this one, shot from the point, goes wide. 
Now you've got something going here. And it's a cross. And fired out. And where's this penalty coming up? I'm not seeing it, guys. Oh, it's going to be right here. It's going to be right here for a trip or something. Oh, right there. Yep, that's going to be a trip. That's a terrible penalty to take. The guy was already in the corner, totally not a threat. And you take that. Yeah, no, that's uh, that's rough. That is rough. Guy was literally, his stick was behind the goal line. And he took that penalty. Shot, fired. This one still in play. Russia's still got the attack going here. 11.35 to go. And Sweden's going to bust down the ice. But empty net for the goaltender. Icing on Russia. Oh, no. Actually, hold on. His feet were behind the goal line. But the stick was still in the play. Noted. Noted. Very well noted. Okay, let's see what we're operating here. We're operating all right this evening. Just want to take a look at how things are moving along here. They're moving along not too bad this evening. All right, 1,760 views on the live stream. Guys, thank you to everybody that's tuned in. Can't say that enough. It, it blows me away that 1,761 people would bother tuning in to me on their Wednesday evening, the second last day of 2020, to just try and even spend a second listening to me talk about the world juniors i mean it's me honestly all right let's see what else we got going here philip broberg has been unable to properly extend his stride all night that usually suggests a core issue that last rush looks to be have aggravated it he's playing well below 100 percent in my opinion good take from kurt levens and the thing is Broberg has played uh, more than anyone on either team tonight at 15.29 so far through two periods. And that, my friends, is all you need to know from Twitter. I keep trying to check that, trying to see some news about a training camp roster. But Ken Holland won't release that till noon tomorrow. You know that. Holtz goes for hooking. Okay, again, still, I just don't get these hooking penalties at the legs, but apparently that's a thing that gets called. Okay, sure enough, let's go. 11.29 on the power play. Russia, D to D to start it off after the faceoff win to the far side half wall it goes. Puck played back to the point. D to D once again. There, no, they thought about clapping that puck. They thought about it at least. Wee. Puck back to the point. Now, Russia there. They're going to find it back, and maybe, maybe, there's a chance. Oh, what is with this behind the back, between the legs stuff that everybody keeps doing in front of the net? That's been one of, if not the most popular in close play in the tournament I've seen in all the games I've watched. There's been three attempts at that. McMichael tried it, of course. You had a Russian player try it, and you had Soderblom score it, and I think one of the USA players scored it too. I really don't, like, are these goalies that small, or what's what's going on here that everybody seems to be making that play? I'm sorry, what, what am I missing is what I'm asking, essentially. 135 to go in the Russian power play, 2-2 two, two the score, 11 minutes to go, and it'd be nice to see Sweden get a shorty here, just really uh, set this game on its head, but I don't know if we're going to get to see that this puck fired back to the point there this one fired in backhand stabbed away Sweden with the save and knocked out of the crease are the Russians okay all right all right 17 minutes or 17 seconds and a minute to go on the penalty kill for Sweden Kuznutninov Kuznutninov how is it going I don't know how it goes. I'm just butchering it, aren't I? Getting a little tired, guys. You haven't seen me live stream at 10 o'clock in a long while. Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Dolan TV After Dark Live. 10.43 to go in this uh, third period. It's just about 10 o'clock here in Alberta. And it's going to be a goal. Oh, boy. Okay. All right. All right. I guess Sweden score, gets scored on. This one shot from the point coming. They're going to work it across. Oh, look at that. Nice pivot. By Russia, it's going to be down in the corner. They're going to work it back. 
Some good puck movement here, and this one's going to go across and now walk in. Shot off the post, back of the net. Off the post, back of the net. Wall set, no chance. Perfect shooting position. Perfect shooting position. Not percentage, position for the Russians. Philip Broberg, he's on the ice for that one, but not much anyone can really do when you give a guy that wide open of a shot. As, yeah, I'm sorry. Look at Broberg. He's hunched over. He's not 100%. He's not. He... No. No. He's hurting. He's hurting. He's not moving nearly as well as Broberg normally moves. That's a perfectly placed shot. I mean, pff, can't get a better snipe than that. But you got to be kidding me if Broberg is even at 65% based on that. Yeah. 3 2 for the Russians, Sweden. 10 09 to go in this third period. They got to gut it out. They only need to keep this winning streak alive. You've won that many games. Just keep it going at this point. Take it to New Year's Eve at worst. 10 03 to go. The Russian hockey fans, they're looking a little bit more comfortable with this lead, that's for sure. And, uh, ooh, here we go. What's, uh, what's Sam got for me here? And, uh, yep, that's for sure. Yes, sir, Sam. That is looking like a groin, leg, or some kind of core issue for Philip Broberg. I mean, my uh, my back's killing me. Does that count as an injury? My back's killing me sitting in this chair tonight, but hey, we got 9.50 to go in this third period, and we're going to get this going. Joe, welcome into the live stream. You look to be a St. Louis Blues fan. Who are you watching in between Russia and Sweden that's on the St. Louis Blues? That's my question to you. As 9.36 to go here in this third period. You gotta hope 31 shots on net results in something more here by the time they get it up to 35, 36. Kirill Kursanov gets the goal for Russia. Artemi, I can't even pronounce that, gets an assist. Uh, I'm not making a joke there. I'm just not even going to try and embarrass myself. Just going to be honest. As Alexander Holtz offside... In the third period, Kursanov gets the goal. A beautiful snipe. And that puts the Russians ahead. 3-2. 3-2 it is. So let me see what we got going on here. I'm just going to casually take a look at that uh, Roslovic video just coming to life all of a sudden. I'm looking at really not much else going on on Dolan TV other than this live stream and this Roslovic video. There is not much else for... Uh, Views on Dolan TV. There are only in the past hour six videos. Oh, maybe not. Hold on. I lie. There are a lot of videos in the past hour that have gotten views. A total of 20 videos in the last hour on Dolan TV that have a view or more. So thank you for that. As even starting year two, look at Peyton Krebs. Has something going. All right. Ooh, wake up, Tyson. Kursnov. From Nizev, ah, oh, there we go, Nyazov, Nizev, and Amirov. Amirov now up to two points on the game, by the way. As, let's get back to it, the shift of the game. Who's it going to? Well, it's going to Russia. They're going on this power play, I think, where they're going to circle this round. They're going to flop this over to Kursanov, who scores the snipe. It's almost 10 p.m. Yes, it is almost 10 p.m. And I am very, extremely, extremely tired. It was a long day at work. Thankfully, only four hours tomorrow. I got to get coffee for the boys. I got to get donuts for the boys. I got to really spend that Tim's card I got for Christmas for the boys. All right. Inside nine minutes to go in this game for the boys. All right. Let's do it. Third period. Crunch time. Sweden needs two goals. Sam, they got them in them. Let me know. Well, Stein, where are Hudson? You're doing all right. The boys. <laughs> right on. 8.40 to go in this third period. Let's just clutch it up for the boys. <laughs> I'm a goof. This is why you subscribe to Dolan TV. I, t I tell you. I tell you if, you. if you subscribe to me for the Oilers coverage, you are severely lacking why you're subscribing. Oh, drive to the net here for Sweden. They get it going. They can't get it going. 8.20 to go in the third period. 
And I got to make a phone call after this. I'm not. I'm not uh, not looking forward to doing that. It's just a matter of I got to make that phone call, and I am dead tired. So it's going to be fun. Old Budsy's not going to enjoy the phone call too much, especially after I got a little riled up on the phone with him. But uh, Russia still giving it to Sweden. Last preliminary loss, 513 days ago, December 31st, 2006 versus USA. But I thought they were riding this streak from 2008. I'm not sure. What do I do for work? I am a sheet metal slinger. I, I sell sheet metal. Sheet metal as in the stuff that attaches to your furnace so as you have heat in the house. But staying awake even though it's 12 p.m. here in Indiana. Hey, Joe, respect. Indiana, that's a tough grind. 8.05 to go in the third period. Let's just get this over with, all right? We're in a good hockey game. Don't kid yourself. This has been good a hockey game. But, I mean, having Philip Rober go out there and just watching him. Oh, good shot there, Askarov. Can't get it going. Heat duct, yes. Heat duct uh, is what we'd be talking. And AC. Don't forget AC. you got to properly size your ducts for AC. If you over oversize your AC, you might have some problems in your house, by the way. Just uh, just a pro pro tip from the sales desk. I mean, not a pro tip from a contractor. Pro tip from the sales desk. That's what you need. That's always, everybody's always asking my professional opinion. I'm like, I'm a broadcaster. Do you want me to tell you what I do on YouTube today? <laughs> right, it's tough. I, I feel bad. I mean, I at least, uh, I at least get it going. It's not a Home Depot commercial. I would not work at Home Depot. I, uh, Home Depot, I, I would be overqualified to work at Home Depot with the experience I have now. As this, Wallstep plays it there. 7.47 to go. He's going to fire it down. Let's see what we got going on. Shot into the neutral zone. See, Joe, I, I wouldn't classify myself as fun. I'm just a goof, and I uh, I embrace it. That's the thing. Uh, for the longest while, when people would call me a goof, I'd get rather insulted and upset, and I'd fire back. I'm a goof. <laughs> I'm a nut. I'm a I'm something special. That's for sure. Soderblom. How about him? He's special. Six foot seven or six foot eight, depending who on the internet you ask. He's a monster out there. He comes up with a puck because. Man, you lose the puck in his skates, you might never find it again. And the Swedes, all kinds of trouble trying to get out of their own zone here. 7.08 to go in the third period. 33 shots on net for Sweden. Down 3-2. to two. And My eyes aren't even properly <laughs> working anymore. The things are getting a little blurry here as my eyes are getting a little heavy. There's Philip Broberg still out there late in the game. He's uh, He's trying. That's all we can say. He's trying to win his team a hockey game, and unfortunately, it's not looking good. But hey, don't count out Switzerland. Wait, that was last game. <laughs> now I'm just messing with you guys for the fun of it. Sweden pushing this puck up. They're going to get on side. Their best uh, forwards out there. Trying to get it done. Soderblom getting ridden off the puck. Soderblom falls down. That's a That's a heavy one. And trust me, Mr. Faircom. I wish I could blame it on that. I wish I could. All right, 6.04 to go in this third period. It's getting sleepy, but that's why I'm having a little bit more fun with it. You just got to gotta laugh sometimes when it gets a little heavy. And I mean, 3-2, Russia over Sweden. Nobody's getting down. And that's the hard part about the oil streams. Everybody gets down. Everybody starts swearing. Everybody gets worked up. And I mean... Just Laugh it off. It's just one of those games. And I mean, as an Oilers fan, when we get losing 5 nothing, I get pretty upset too. I'm not going to kid you in. I probably shut off the stream. But 5.35 to go in this third period. It's just fired in, fired out. Oh, Sweden actually has possession in the offensive zone. Last all of the three seconds it took me to say that. And now back come the other Russians the other way. Poked off their stick. It's just slapstick hockey in the neutral zone into the offensive zone and back out. And Joe, yes. I'm an Oilers fan, Oilers fan, Oilers fan, Oilers fan. This is what Dolany TV is, is an Oilers channel covering Philip Roberg and the World Juniors with Dylan Holloway on Team Canada. Oh my goodness. It's almost over, maybe, if we don't take it to overtime, which is a distinct possibility at this point, so who knows. 462 in terms of how many people have stopped by. We've got a commercial break, and we've got... 31 saves for Yaroslav Askarov, 26 for Jesper Wallstep. Both goalies right around that 900 mark. Uh, 
Askarov, 930, Wallstedt, 890. And, well, box score, here's how it breaks down. Amirov, two points. Afanasyov, one point. A whole bunch of Russians with one point. And then you've got one goal for Kosmer, one goal for Holtz, Holmstrom, Gundler, Andre, and Johansson with assists. I've never been in an Oilers stream on this channel. You're excited. Well, get excited because it's going to be a good time. I promise you that. That was kind of the point behind these World Juniors squad, uh, streams too, to try and squeak out a couple extra Oilers fans for hockey season. As you see, it's kind of worked. We have kind of 100 people have joined all in the TV in the past week. And if you're thinking, hey, you know what? I should hit that subscribe button. Joe, maybe you in particular to follow up on what's going on in the Canadian division. I'll be a pretty good source for that, I promise you that. So maybe you want to hit that. And I see, without asking, three people have considered hitting that subscribe button. Thank you for that. Sweden, 2-0 and 0 and 0. United States, Russia, each with a loss. Sweden could join them. And tomorrow night could be a complete mess. That's going to be interesting. And Joe, see, he already did. There we go. Didn't even have to open the big mouth. 5.05 to go in this third period. I really should have taken that uh, that uh, commercial break as a bathroom break, but is what it is. We'll go down the ice, and that will be icing against the Russians. 4.55 to go. Get ready. Buckle up, folks. We're inside the last five minutes. 33 shots to 29 for the Swedes. Down a goal, and uh, you got to think there's a little bit of nervous energy on that bench, but also a little bit of a we got this attitude to get going. All right, let's get it going here. We got to see something. 4:53 to go in this third period, and hopefully something more to come. I've already subbed long ago. All good. You're a good time to watch, especially during the season. You don't want to watch me during the season. Usually, it's nothing but bad things. Shot chance opportunity here for Russia, but turned away beautifully. By the Swedish defense, they keep it onside for a second to the Russians. Offside it goes 4.30 in the third period now. Inside the last, what is that? Ooh, count the seconds for me, Tyson. 270 seconds to go in this third period. Rackhand chance, Wallstedt turns it away. Now turning down, we're almost, ooh, look at that, 255 seconds. This is where I really have fun. You know when it gets to crunch time, I start talking about seconds on the clock. And getting that nervous energy going in my body. And my team's losing right now are the Swedes. So, a little bit nervous. Yeah, that, that tends to happen. Down a goal late in the third period. We're inside the last four minutes now. The Swedes trying to form a breakout. Broberg way behind the play here. He can't catch up to that puck. It's going to go off the boards. They're going to keep it in to Sweden. Now off the boards. Half wall. Walking it off. Coming in. They're not going to get it done. 340. To go in the third period, it's uh, nervous energy time, that's for sure. Sweden's captain telling them where to put the puck, firing it in, cross the zone, back behind the net, Soderblom back out there, and you got to believe. Sweden's looking for something, Johansson on the ice. And yeah, I, I absolutely believe the way this one's trending, Russia will win this one unless Sweden pulls it out in overtime. A total of 195 seconds, less than 200 seconds to go in the hockey game. That puts it in perspective, doesn't it? As we now tick towards the three-minute mark, and there it is, the three-minute mark of the hockey game. Canada, Finland tomorrow, I'll have it for you. Yes, sirree. I'll have it for you. 2.55 to go in this third period. Don't doubt the Berg. I'm not, I'm not trying to doubt him. He's not even on the ice, unfortunately. That's the frustrating part. And we find ourselves Igor Larionov taking a chance. And Russia can win, I hope. The Broberg injury isn't too bad. That's my key. I'm just hoping Broberg is fully healthy and ready to go. But look at that. Soderstrom gets danced but comes up with the stick just in time. 2.52 to go on the clock. 1.72 the seconds on the board. And, well, how about this? 2.45 on the clock, and the Swedes trying to get an attack going. They're going to see this one saved there by Broberg. He falls down, keeps it in. Beautiful play by him. Shot fired off the post, and oh, to play you. Sam, you aren't kidding me. Wow, what a shot there by the Swedes. And Askarov knows he got lucky, but talk about having a good game. We knew Askarov was due, and how about tonight against... Sweden, it comes to fruition for him. And look at this, Kosmer, buzzing all the game, doing what he does. Shoots the puck backhand. One last rock, and top shelf was all the way open. 
And the bar, my friends, the bar is the difference there. There was a good six inches to put that one home over the shoulder of Askarov, who was hunched a little more than he should have been. Cosmer can't bite it, two thirty-two to go. 215th overall draft pick by Vancouver. Wow, absolutely insane. Seventh round draft pick by Vancouver has had this good going. And the latest I've ever streamed, I've streamed past 12 midnight, Dan. A Junior B hockey game in St. Paul, Alberta, Game 7 of uh, of the NEJBHL first round in which Cold Lake won against St. Paul. That's on this channel. I have live streamed later into the night. I believe it was 1 a.m. leaving St. Paul as Wainwright took it in triple overtime. That was insane. That's the only place I go to watch hockey in the bar. I tell you, not a bad place to go, especially if it's a local bar. Don't go to Boston Pizza. Go to your local pub and enjoy a pint or two and support some local boys. 145 to go empty net for Sweden now. That's tough. But, you know what? Shot comes front of the net. Russia clears it down the ice. That, my friends, is going to be icing. 132 to go in the third period. And that's going to be a timeout for Sweden. Here we go. Crunch time, nervous energy, whatever you want to say. It's been interesting so far, but we'll manage to get through it, I'm sure. So let me just quickly open this back up here for a second. Well, that's looking all right as we've had a decent little stream here. I'm sure we can cross over 2,000 views by the end of it. Let's get it going. <laughs> 15 seconds left in this. Time out. Seven seconds to go. They're trying to get it going. Igor Larionov, he looks calm, poised, and collected. The Swedish fans, they're a little nervous looking. I don't know where our buddy Swede there, uh, Matthias Olin, went. He's somewhere. And the Russians, they look like they're ready to take this one home. They're looking good. Somebody's got a fur coat on the back of their couch. Might need it in Russia this evening. It might be cold. It's a little cold in the basement, quite honestly. All right, here we go. Apply yourself. Let's go. Oh my goodness, no way. Prepping for your double header tomorrow. <sighs> then PS4. Yeah. All nighter. Oh, all nighter, Josh. Sorry, I read that wrong. All right, we're getting to a Sweden goal here, by the way. We're about to see 3 3. I'll celebrate when it gets going. Empty net for Sweden. They're telling them, telling them to go to Soderstrom. Soderstrom, point shot blast from the, oh, 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 there you go. Sweden, celebrate that one, baby. That's a big one. That's a huge one. A minute to go on the clock right on. 60 seconds left, and what a shot there from Noel Gundler. Oh, baby. Who else but Noel Gundler scores the goal? Yeah, Sweden's losing their mind. They're a little fired up about this one. Get it going, dude. Get it going. Yes, sirree. How about that? Tie it up 3 3. And look at this. Gundler had the shot all the way. And there's the shot and the tip off of Gundler or Soderblom. And there's the shot, and it's going to go off of Gundler in front, back of the net. No chance for Askarov. And now the question is for the boys, do we see overtime? <laughs> That's how quick I can work things in, by the way. There we go. Excellent work there. And skates flying all over the ice. Soderblom doesn't even have to jump, and the guy can't jump as tall of him. Dug deep and want that extra, and now you see the fruits. Got it done. One minute to go. Third period. 57 seconds in this third period. We may very well see some overtime, my friends. Some overtime. 50 seconds to go. First overtime game for me, potentially, if Sweden doesn't turn this over and cost them a goal. And am I that far behind? Am I really that far behind? I guess we are. 39 seconds to go. Quick Sloth, you're, you're taking it action fast. 35 seconds now in this one. 30 on the clock. Let's take it home. You guys want OT? I guess we're getting OT. Let me see if I can't uh, refresh this a little bit faster, see what the time on the clock is going to be. I think I killed my stream. Apparently I can pause it. 16 seconds to go now. And well, you know what? Let's take OT, shall we? We'll have a little bit of fun, ladies and gentlemen. I will be right back. I'm just going to take a bathroom break. And tie game going into overtime. I'll be right back.
Let's take it. Let's do it. Needs to win this game after that last minute goal. <sighs> Absolutely. Let's get it done, ladies and gentlemen. Uh-oh. Hey, bud. Oh, buddy, up in cold lake going to work, eh? All right, for the boys. Let's get it done. Russia wins it. Hunter, I don't know. Yeah, you're in here. Let's get this going. And I uh, do not have any beer in the house. I do not keep that on stock. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get this done. Sweden, Russia, overtime. Let's get it going. Josh, yeah. Just had to extend it that extra bit. Hey, I was planning on going to bed, and now it's 10.14 in the evening, and Tyson's still alive on the live stream. Let's just not go any further to a shootout, shall we? Is it 4-on-4, four four, or is it 5-on-5, five five and then 4-on-4, four four and then shootout? I don't remember how this works, or did they actually change it to 3-on-3? Three three? I, I can't. I, heck, if I've paid attention to the rules in the past five years, I really haven't paid attention since the uh, 2017 World Juniors, when I actually had time to watch it. Anyway. Let's go get it done. If Russia wins this, you got to take a shot of... Oh, man, I don't... Uh, probably put me to bed if I did. 4.55 to go in overtime. 3-on-3 three three OT here in the IHF World Juniors. For this year, 9.14 where you are. All right, think 3-on-3. Three three. Russia starts out from their own zone. They're going to dump it off to the option man across in the zone, across the neutral zone. Quickly they are. And now... Here we go. Back in. 4.30 to go in this period. Russia didn't like what they had. They gun up now. They're across the line. That's Philip Broberg taking to the man, but he is... Philip Broberg is way behind the play here. Why he is out there in overtime, I mean, he's your best player, sure, but oh my goodness. Don't do that. Don't do that, man. It's brutal. Don't have Philip Broberg out there. He's had a bad game. He's had a rough game. He's hurt. Just let him be. 4.06 to go. It's NHL rule. Yeah, 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 it's three on three. I'm paying attention now. Four minutes in this OT period, and nothing solved yet. Russia, the best chance so far. They're going to gun up across. Broberg beat again. Aye. Aye, aye, aye. I mean, I'm sorry. If you're the Swedish coach, how you can think having Broberg out there in the overtime when he can barely move. He can barely move. Watch him. He's just getting absolutely floored out there. And he, I mean, he's getting there to make a play, sure, but it's tough. Try here, taking Askarov, goal to goal, game winner, wouldn't that be something? Here we go, 3.50 to go in overtime. Nothing happening so far for Sweden. They're getting their first chance with possession, really and truly. They're going to gun it up across the line. That's Gundler. Gundler is going to see this one hop off a Cosmer stick. Johansson's out there playing defense. 3.30 to go in this OT period. All right, let's get it going back the other way. Russia on the attack. They're going to go across. That's going to be off to the option man. Shot over top of the net. Hey, all right. Breathe, Tyson, breathe. Sweden leaves it back there. They are going to take this one on the attack at some point here. So here we go. Back the other way in. Yeah, well, that's great, but Broberg is also injured. Broberg is currently injured for the Team Sweden, so it would be nice to see him not uh, not out there in overtime, potentially costing him his team a game, but end of the day, he is your best player, I guess. Backhand, chance, and chance for Sweden, but they can't cash it. Soderstrom, bit too big of a man out there trying to make that play in close between the net and uh, the post, so he can't cash it, but now Sweden with the best chance right now. 
And yeah, I take Broberg. I'm not complaining. If Broberg scores the OT winner, that's great. But Soderblom blew it and somehow gets it back. He gets a shot blocked, snaps, dicked, and I'm losing my word. All right, anyway. Back the other way. Ooh, turnover there by Russia. That's onto the stick of Holtz. Broberg right there. He's going to get going. He's going to turn back. Now he's got some legs all of a sudden moving that puck. And this one, Lucas Raymond. That's a deadly line. Raymond, Holtz, and of course Broberg. What a line. Holtz looking for a pass from Raymond. He's just going to keep skating around the board. And maybe finally dump it off to Holtz. There we go. Broberg in front of the net. He's looking for a chance. This one shot wide of the net. By example, I bet he's telling the coach, I want to be out there with my team. Well, Farquhar, that's great. But coach has got to know when to rein in his captain, too. We know we've seen Dave Tippett not rein in dry settle at times, and it's cost the Oilers. Holtz getting it going. He's staying. I mean, this line's been dominant. Holtz, Raymond, and Robert getting out there. But now they're getting tired. Holtz gets rubbed off the puck. Don't even ask for a penalty on that one. You just need to move your legs faster. And now Russia back on the attack. Broberg out there defending. He's playing center of the ice. He's going to take to the man. And again, he's just... He looks so bad out there. That's rough. And now Raymond gets turned around. You've got a tired two crew on the ice for Sweden and a fresh set of legs in Gundler out there. But that's about it. Inside the last minute of overtime now. The attack front to the net. Save by Wallstedt, who's all of a sudden had a very good game and above 900 save percentage. And this one played back to the neutral zone. And he got 46 seconds to go. We've got a penalty to Sweden coming up. Got to believe Russia's going to try and clutch this up in OT with a penalty to Sweden. I think, uh, let me know if they take their time out. As Russia going to lead into the attack. And that's going to be a... That's going to be a hold, a hook, or something. 24.9 on the clock. 24.9, that's a hold against Russia, or against Sweden. Russia to the power play, my friends. Let's finish this off, shall we? Let's get this done. It's going to be interesting to see what happens here now for Team Sweden and Team Russia. A game that's developed a very good one, but an all-around, I think, weird one. Just watching from an Oilers perspective, watching Philip Roberg play as injured as he appears to be. And timeout for Russia. All right. Figured as much, and it's a Mirov. Look at that. It's a Mirov getting that going and getting cleared of the crease on that hold. Interesting to see there. Johansson not very impressed. He's ooh, he's, he's saying some fancy words there, that's for sure. Cosmer holding 436, 13 seconds to go in. Uh, sorry, that's the timeout, not the game. There's about 24, 25 seconds to go in over time as Jack Michaels may over exaggerate it just saying that the best chance of overtime Soderblom almost got it done but too big of a man to make that backhand happen and this one right there walking to the slot wired wide and now you get it going here two minute power play with 24.9 seconds to go shootout next I believe shootout is next if it involves uh no goal here. Save there by Wallstedt. 17.7 .7 on the clock. Wind it down, would you? Wind it down. That'd be the nice thing to do right now as we could really use a clutch up uh, save here from Wallstedt. And Dan, you're saying goal. And I'm saying that's it. That's all. She wrote in overtime if that's the case. But hold on. We'll watch the goal. Don't you worry. 17.7 .7 in overtime. Sweden off the face-off win. They lose the puck. Now out there, Philip Broberg, who's still skating around awkwardly. This puck, shot from Russia. Rebound, back of the net with 5.5 seconds to go. And that's it. That's all. 4-3 Russia in overtime. That's all she wrote, my friends. Russia wins it. Game over. I'm going to catch you. All right, I'm going to quick out here. I gotta get to bed, I gotta go to work, and then we're gonna get back for the double header tomorrow, alright? Double header on Dolany TV. Camera shaking all over the place. Canada, Finland, Sweden, USA, be here, be square, 3 30 p.m. Mountain Time. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Tyson. This is Dolany TV. Thanks for hanging out. I'm gonna catch you tomorrow.